champion! It is the second and final day of the Arnold Strongman Classic. Three events remain before we crown a champion on the high altar of strength. Welcome everybody inside the Columbus Convention Center here in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet and Dr. Bill Crawford. And Dr. Bill, we'll start with you. Yesterday we only had two events, but we had plenty of excitement. Sean, I don't think anybody saw Rob Kearney being the leader at the end of the first day. I know we didn't. But the other thing that really stands out is Novikov gave a really inspirational performance. Mm -hmm. The other athletes last night were talking about that squat he came out with, which was truly unbelievable. And then Tom Stoltman's fallen way back. The current world's strongest man finds himself in a pretty deep hole right now. That's a look back at yesterday. What are you looking forward to seeing today, Laws? We've got three tremendous events today. I'm really excited to see the log lift. Log for Max is always an exciting event. Who can lift the most weight from the floor to overhead? And an old favorite of mine, the frame carry. I used to love that event. Ten years ago, I got to try it. I can't wait to see what the guys can do on that event today. Bill, you mentioned Rob Kearney on top of the overall standings. That is a bit of a surprise. He is our overall leader thanks to back-to-back second-place finishes. On day number one, he has 18 total points. He leads Alexei Novikov by two. Novikov had that event win in the dumbbell for reps. And then Martin Litis, who came in as the favorite here, he sits in third place. He is just three points out of first place. What stood out about day number one? Well, it'd have to be Rob Kearney. He was our leader at this point. He'd really set himself up with great training in the squat. And I talked to him just a few minutes ago, and he said that his third rep felt better. He got the groove on the, on the implement and did a great job. And then as a professional on the dumbbell, he didn't have five reps or try to go over what he needed to. He got his fourth rep. He conserves his energy for today. He did everything he had to do as a pro to get to this spot. Alexei Novikov sitting in second place, and he dominated event number two yesterday. Well, we all know how good Alexei is. We weren't sure on the kind of mental state he's going to be in. He's proved to us on day one that he is here to battle for the title. Really, really solid performance on the squat. Squatting over 900 pounds. People say he's not strong, he's just fast. 900 pounds is a huge weight. And that performance on the dumbbell, truly one of the most impressive things we've ever witnessed. Head and shoulders above the rest of the field. He's got a big day today, but he's in with a chance. Coming into this competition, we thought we would see what we saw at the Rogue Invitational, where there was a battle between Martins Litsis and Tom Stoltman. Let's check, it, check in on them. One is going the right way, one is not. Let's start with Martins. He's in third place, well within striking distance. He is within striking distance. He tells people he's from California, but we were talking yesterday. He's from a nightmare for these other athletes. He sets himself up. He's consistent. He always comes in prepared. The other thing he do, that he uses is his will. He continues to enforce his will on the competition to have these performances. Today stacks up really well for him because he's got a big motor and there are a couple of events that will let him show that big motor. In other words, he's got a lot of strength endurance. Tom Stolman dug himself a heck of a hole on day one, and he has a lot of work to do here on day number two just to get himself back into contention. Yeah, I mean, Tom started fairly well. I thought his squat was good. He got the most out of that event as I think anyone could expect but it was the dumbbell that really let him down. Zeroing on event at this higher level costs you big points. He's put himself in a, deep, a, a, a bad position for day two, but three events, he's got to fight hard. He's got to prove why he is the current world's strongest man. Well, Rob Kearney put himself in a great position after day number one. He is your overall leader, and he spoke with Kiki Dixon yesterday after he put himself on top of the overall standings. Rob, congratulations. You are standing on top of the leaderboard after day number one. It's been a hell of a couple years. How good does that feel? It feels really good. I mean, you know, so October 2020, I actually ruptured my tricep. Uh, and then coming off of that in June of 2021 was diagnosed with testicular cancer. So to come back to the Arnold after two years of not having it, finishing day one in first place, I mean, it is so cool. You know, my goal coming here with this lineup of guys to be in this position after day one. My goal coming into this show was like, I really just want to have fun and just put on a show for the crowd. And I'm so happy that I was able to do that today. You certainly did going home tonight on top. Obviously it doesn't last that long because we got day two. So what's in store for tomorrow for you? You know, I tried to get Jan Todd to just end the contest now, <laughs> <laughs> but um, day two. So this is what I planned to do was to try to be in first place after day one because there were two really strong events for me. And tomorrow, 
there's the frame carry is a tough one for me. Um, you know, I have small chubby hands, so carrying a lot of heavyweight up a ramp is tough. Uh, we have a max log, which that's actually what I injured my tricep on a couple years ago. But I know I can be competitive in the log, I can be competitive in the stone to shoulder and really just kind of do damage control on the frame. And, uh, you know, being in day one, it really gives me the motivation to, fin to push really hard for a podium finish. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks. There are a lot of other things going on here at the Arnold Sports Festival that involve strength. Weightlifting is one of them. Maddie Rogers is one of the best in the country in that sport, and I was able to talk with her a couple of days ago. Joining us now, a woman who is a three-time silver medalist at the World Weightlifting Championships and the American record holder in the snatch, the clean and jerk, and the total, Maddie Rogers. Maddie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. What have you been up to since the last time we spoke with you? Um, <laughs> I feel like the same old as always. Um, a lot of training. I was at the world championships at the end of last year. So I took a little bit of a break after that. Um, and now we're just slowly ramping up to start this new Olympic quad. And what does that next Olympic quad look like for you? Um, so we are kind of at a well, it could be a disadvantage for some and advantage for others, but we have one year shorter of a quad this year. Um, we do not have any qualifying procedures as of now, so everything's kind of up in the air. Um, we assume by Worlds, which is at the end of this year, we'll have some information because that's supposed to be the first qualifying event. Um, so once again, my weight class got cut <laughs> from the Olympics, uh, so I have to pick a new one. Um, and we're just kind of waiting on, on more information to see where I have to compete, to see if I'm allowed to compete where I want to at least some of the time. Well, you're actually competing this weekend. Where is that happening and what is your goal? Um, I am competing at the Arnold this weekend. Uh, we got moved to the Expo Center, I believe, because it's a record number of participants, which is super cool, a little bit nerve wracking. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. Um, I really wanted to be able to compete in that rogue stage, like kind of exhibition session. But um, again, because of qualification stuff, I had to make sure and do the responsible thing uh, and compete with my actual weight class. So a bit of a bummer, but I'm just hoping to have a nice performance and just make lifts. Nothing crazy, just make them all. You're competing here at the Arnold. What are you looking forward to then after this competition? Um, I'm really excited to keep building. Honestly, I feel like I'm almost to that point of being in my like pre-Olympic shape, which is the best shape I've ever been in my life. And we're like only a couple kilos off from that. So to be starting the quad where I ended the last one is a really exciting thing for me. Cause it's like entering that, like, I didn't know these weights were possible territory, which is always a fun place to be. If someone wants to watch you compete here at the Arnold, where and when can they see that? I am competing at 2 p.m. at the Celeste Center on Sunday on the blue platform, I believe. Um, there are six of them, so your guess is as good as mine on which one. Well, Maddie, thank you so much for joining us, and best of luck this weekend here at the Arnold. Thanks. I'm super excited as well. Maddie Rogers competing on Sunday at the Arnold. If you want to watch her compete, we wish her uh, the best of luck. That should be a treat to watch her lift. From Maddie to Matt, joining me now, the five-time fittest man on earth and someone who also knows a little bit about Olympic weightlifting, Matt Fraser. Matt, thanks so much for being here. Uh, I imagine they have you pretty busy here. What are you doing here at the Arnold? Yeah, you know, bouncing around quite a bit, uh, you know, before the Arnold kicked off, uh, I had the I had the opportunity to do the 22.2 mm -hmm. open announcement, so that was the first for me. Uh, and now, you know, I get to just enjoy all the all the activities going on here. Uh, a couple booth appearances with Rogue, but mostly just running around, having yeah. fun, watching the show. Well, you mentioned that open announcement. That was the first time you got to be part of it from kind of behind the scenes. Yeah. What was that experience like for you? It, it was pretty. You know, it was it was odd how natural it felt. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was a lot of fun. You know, I'm I'm buddies with uh, a lot of the people that were competing so you know getting to announce the workout and then watch your friends go out there and just throw down uh it was it was a lot of fun you moved from athlete now to coach how yeah. has that transition been for you 
You know, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I've had the opportunity to have a handful of different athletes come up, come up to our house and, uh, you know, I'm have the athlete and coach come up and so I can kind of critique the athlete, but m more or less like provide some information to the coach. So when they go home, they still they still have some good eyes on them. But well, one of the athletes you're coaching is Mal O'Brien. She is super young. She's training very hard. You know, you've been in that position when you were training for yeah. the Olympics. How do you keep her from burning out at this age? You know, uh, you know, training her, it's very, it's super enjoyable because you never have to bribe them. You never have to motivate them. You know, my main job with, with her, you know, when she moved up to Vermont, she was only 17 years old. She just graduated high school a couple weeks ago. My main job with her is just pulling on the reins. You know, she wants more. She wants more volume. And, like, that's her comfort blanket. And I'm just pulling on the reins. And I'm like, hey, if like we're trying to set you up for longevity in the sport. Her runway can be 15 years in the sport if she wants it to be. At 17, she was already at the games in top 10 finish. So, you know, we're we're planning for that longevity. But with her, there there's no motivating or trying to having having to inspire her. It's like, all right, let's cut back on the volume and make it quality. When you're with her, do you see a little bit of, of yourself in her? And if so, you know, what do you are the attributes that the the two of you share? Uh, you know, for myself, you know, I'm just I'm happy. She's a very motivated incredibly talented athlete um it's more been on sammy's side when, like, <laughs> her response to certain things sammy uh, my wife will just kind of crack up and be like oh that is a spitting image of you like that was your exact answer you know six seven years ago well matt i always appreciate you taking the time i know you're really busy thanks so much for doing this and best of luck uh, in the coach's role yeah, and thank I look you. forward to seeing you again soon man thank you for having me Matt Fraser, five-time fittest man on earth and now the coach of Mal O'Brien and Jake Marconi. Looking forward to watching those two athletes. Martins Leetzies is here at the Arnold Strongman Classic looking to do something that he has yet to accomplish. He's done plenty in his career so far, but he has never stood on top of the podium here. He hopes to change that in 2022. Martins Leetzies! Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to be up here with the world's strongest of the strong and be one of them and then also beat them as well. He could be a bit of an X factor here. And that is two for Martins Lisi's. And Martins Lisi's will be your new leader. I think instead of being called the dragon, it should be called the nightmare because this guy will not go away. Right now, Martins Leachies at 70. Got it! Good position. Good lockout. Excellent flip. This is big for Leachies. He needs this. The Leachies is good at 9.06. And Leachies has done it. He'll get another second place finish, and he will be your overall leader. He is your Rogue Invitational Champion! What an athlete, and what a return to Strongman. Martins Lisi's comes into the day in third place overall. He's just three points out of first, and he spoke with Kiki Dixon earlier. Martins, day two, about ready to get started. How satisfied were you with day one? Um, I'm happy. It's a good place to be. I wanted one more repetition on the dumbbell. I could have had it, but um, either way, good points and good events for today. So that, that log, the next one's going to be everything. It will be. What is your plan of attack for the log? Uh, start heavy, get heavier, and then get really heavy. <laughs> Fair enough. Solid strategy. We look forward to seeing you out Thank there. Thank you very much. I look forward to doing it. Thanks, Martin. That's a great strategy. Hopefully you can follow that. Welcome back, uh, Lawrence Chalet and Dr. Bill Crawford here. Let's take a look at what is going on here on the second and final day of the Arnold Strongman Classic. We'll start off with the Austrian Oak. More on that in a second. The Timber Carry will be event number two. We have a couple of Rogue Record Breakers events we'll be bringing you as well. And then we finish up with the Stone to Shoulder. But event number three is the Austrian Oak. What do you guys like about this test? The Austrian Oak has huge history to it. Ten years ago, I got to compete in this show. It was the first time they revealed this log. Just a beautiful piece of kit. 
Guys like Zadrunas Aviscus absolutely dominating this type of event. Mike Jenkins, another incredible log lifter. And we've got four incredible log lifters today. We may see a new world record. Dr. Bill, I know you love log pressing. We'll get you excited about seeing that implement out on the floor. Well, again, it's just the history. When you lay your hands on this, you know it's a piece of history. And are you going to become greater than you were before just by trying to lift this? The other thing is that we're going to see who can lift the, log, the heaviest log. I'm really excited by that because it's not that often we get to see a max log. And this is one of the first times here that we've seen that. 60 seconds to make their attempts. And there is some strategy here. It'll be much like the back squat that we kicked off day one. With that being said, Dr. Bill, you know, much different than pre pressing a barbell or a dumbbell. What are the keys to successfully pressing the Austrian oak? Well, for one thing, the oak is further in front of your shoulders than a barbell. You need to have an efficient lift of the shoulders. Why would you do that? Because you don't want to waste time getting it to your shoulders. Then you need to push up and back because you've got to cross your face and then get your head through for a good lift. Another factor is that a little bit of the balance, but also most guys use hip drive. So you want to get a good hip drive with, this, with the log as well. And there's Martin Vlitsis warming up backstage before event number three. He comes in in third place overall after day number one. Rob Kearney is your overall leader atop the standings, courtesy of back-to-back -back second place finishes in the back squat and the dumbbell for reps. Alexei Novikov just two points behind him, and then there is Martin Vlitsis in third. JF Caron, who won the opening event, wasn't able to get a successful lift on the dumbbell, so he fell down to fourth, and Maxime Boudreau rounding out the top five. Among our top three here, Dr. Bill, who do you think does the best here in event number three? Well, I'd have to say would, my vote is for Martins because he's actually had a couple of reps with the 400 kilogram Austrian Oak before. And so I think he's seen the implement on the stage and has done pretty well with it. So I would have to put my mark for him. Now, among the top three laws, who needs to do well in this event? For me, looking at the, uh, the guys in the top three, this is a really important one for Novikov. If he can be tied on points, or even possibly beat Martins. He puts himself into a real contention to challenge for the overall title. What he doesn't want to be doing now is allowing Martins to get ahead of him with events like the frame and the stone to come. Be a lot of fun to watch. We are going to take a break. When we return, we will have the opening event of the day, event number three of five, the Austrian Oak here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Stay with us, everybody.
the next challenge. The Austrian Oak, it is one of the most famous implements in the sport of strongman and it is the next challenge at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic. To quote our good friend, Dr. Bill Crawford, we are on the high altar of strength here at the Arnold Strongman Classic in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you so much for being with us today, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet. And Lawrence, it is so good to be back in this venue at this event with these fans. Absolutely incredible. Walking around, the atmosphere is electric. People are excited to see the greatest strongman on the planet, as am I. You can see I'm absolutely pumped. Amazing day one. Let's get on with day two. I'm ready. I'm ready to flip this desk over and go <laughs> here, man. I'm fired up. Let's take a look at the overall standings after one day of competition. And it's Rob Kearney who had back-to-back second-place finishes in the first two events. He has 18 points. Alexei Novikov sits two points back in second place. Martins Litis, who came in as the favorite, still well within strike distance of the top spot on the leaderboard. He is third with 15 points, three points back of Rob Kearney. Event number three is the Austrian Oak for max weight. There is some strategy here on this event like there was yesterday in the back squad. Of course, you don't want to kind of go too heavy and, and, and risk. We saw that with Luke Stoltman on the squat yesterday. He needs to be smarter today. This is an event he is coming in to win. So he'll want to make sure he picks his numbers well. We may see Luke wait till a little later to get in there. But we have a lot of lifters that are going to be of a similar number. And this is going to really set us up to see who's going to take the overall later today. The Austrian Oak is a beautifully diabolical implement. And Kiki Dixon has more on that piece of equipment. This log is eight feet long. At the ends, those ropes, 22 inches in diameter. The log itself, 12 inches in diameter. The handles are 26 inches apart. This thing took six weeks to make. Terry Todd and Steve Slater collaborated on this, and Steve was so obsessed with the perfection and the beautification of this log, he lost 25 pounds. I suppose that's one way to cut weight, huh, guys? Yeah, not one I would necessarily recommend. Um, but it you know, works for Steve, so I guess good on him. What are the keys here to being successful with the Austrian Oak? Yeah, well, this, this piece of kit is truly tremendous. Steve did an amazing job with it. But these guys need to have tremendously strong shoulders and triceps. We saw the dumbbell yesterday. That's a more explosive type event. This one comes down to a strong core, big shoulders, big triceps, and obviously very good technique. They need to get that log set nice and high on their clavicle right into their chest. You'll see the guys looking straight up into the air. They need to make sure they're not blinded by the lights. Then it's all about a strong leg drive, forcing your head through and pressing out to a locked out position, waiting for the down signal from the referee. Who do you expect to do well here in event number three? Well, we've got a number of good log lifters today, but the man that stands out, the man that has performed consistently well on log lift for Max over the last year is Luke Stoltman. And after yesterday, he needs a big performance. Your event participants are on the left side of your screen. It looks like that will be the order in which they will lift with Rob Kearney coming up first. Now, Kearney's a guy who has had some success in his career lifting a log, but he does have a triceps injury that he suffered a couple years ago on this implement, and he's trying to do maybe some a little damage control here. Absolutely. Rob is a former American record holder, so he's put some seriously big numbers overhead. Unfortunately, trying to break that record, he did detach his tricep. Now he's on the way back up. So I spoke to him yesterday about the log. He wants to stay, try and remain competitive. There was a time he may be looking to win this event. Now he's looking to get fourth, fifth place and stay in the competition. And the weight on the log will never decrease. Each man will have three attempts, just like they did yesterday in the one rep max back squad. Rob Kearney, your overall leader after two second place finishes on day number one. He really did have a tremendous first day as well. The dumbbell and the squat 
fantastic performances from Rob Kearney. Let's see how his log is looking. That's a good solid opening lift there, very explosive. Good drive of the legs, 380 pounds going up, no problem there for Rob Kearney. Good first attempt for our overall leader. And that will bring out Yevgeny Markov. Markov was one of the only men to not make a third attempt on the back squat yesterday. He may have started a little bit aggressively on his first lift and then missed his second. He was out. He has his work cut out for him here as he looks to work his way up the overall standings. Yeah, I think he's taking a more sensible approach today. I want to get that first rep in. The first rep, like I said yesterday on the squat, it's about establishing that confidence. Going from the platform in the warm-up area to out in front of the crowd with the bright lights, it feels different. And this first lift is really just going to settle the nerves. Three hundred. 80 pounds here for Yevgeny Markov. And he will make that. Solid first lift there. Different technique to Rob Kearney. But getting the same result. Nice easy first lift for Markov. So J.F. Caron will be the next man up. J.F. won the one rep max back squat yesterday. 966 pounds, but then ran into trouble on event number two, now sits in fourth place overall. Yeah, JF has had a bit of a shoulder injury since the Rogue Invitational, which he, he actually got on the dumbbell event, so he was always worried about that one. I spoke to him this morning, and he was telling me some crazy numbers, and, and watching how easily he, he did the squat yesterday, you believe those numbers for the squat, but for him to be competitive and aim to get on the podium, he needs to be performing big across the five events. So he really can't afford a bad, log, a bad log lift here. He needs to make this look easy and show he's still in contention. So far, two men have gone, both Rob Kearney and Yevgeny Markov successfully lifting 380 pounds. You see as well there, JF has the sunglasses on. It's not because it's sunny inside here. Uh, the lights are quite bright and they can dazzle the athletes, which can just make them lose their balance a little, make them feel a little disorientated. So he's just got the shades on just to kind of help with that. It's not to look cool, trust me. <laughs> Although JF does look cool. I don't think anybody's going to tell him that there's a problem wearing sunglasses indoors right now. <laughs> 380 for J.F. Perone. So let's see how bad this shoulder is, because if this is an issue for him, then he is really in trouble with the overall competition. Good, powerful hip drive to get the log up to the shoulders. And that will count for J.F. Perone. Good, solid lockout. Up next... The man who won World's Strongest Man in 2021, Tom Stoltman, as we take one more look at J.F. Caron's last lift. So he pulls the log nice and tight into the body, drives through the hips to roll it up. Good leg drive, and then the triceps working hard to lock out. Now Stoltman's going to jump up to 400 pounds for his first attempt. So one of the most impressive things I've ever seen on this log was Adrinus Aviscus back in 2014, lifting 450 pounds for four reps. You know when we get up to the 450 mark, these guys are lifting big numbers, and Adrinus did that for four repetitions. And that is why he won this competition so many times. <laughs> one of the most dominant strongmen ever. And this is the... First time in more than 10 years that we have not had a returning champion in the field. Yeah, we're going to be guaranteed a new champion. 
ever since 2014, if you're Zadruna Zavikis, Brian Shaw, or Hathor Bjornsson, you were winning this. Here comes Tom Stolden for his first attempt. Tom's first appearance at the Arnold's. The current world's strongest man. His log has improved a lot over the last few years. Let's see how it's looking today. Ooh. Can't quite get a, get a handle on that first see press. See that stability there, just being thrown off. And now he has it. So good recovery from Tom Stolman to get his first lift. There would have been a little bit of nervous tension there watching that and, and that first rep not going up. He would have been a little concerned. He's got the good rep now, he can relax and focus on adding weight. So one more look, good recovery here from Tom Stolman as he missed his first press. Watch his legs here, it's just a little bit shaky. Mistimed that. All these little stumbles, they start to drain your energy. So to recover from that and press this out is actually very impressive. A good save from Tom Stoltman. And that is very much what I'm talking about, going from the warm-up lifts to the contest platform. Those nerves are very real, they kick in. We may see Tom come back and do a much better second lift. Trey Mitchell will be up next, the man known as Big Tex. Trey's a very, very strong log lifter as well. He wants to put himself in contention to become the American record holder. The American record currently stands with Thompson, who's going to be the last lifter out by the looks of things. First attempt for Trey Mitchell at 400. And that's that a is strong lift. A good looking lift from Trey Mitchell. He barely paused as he was bringing that log up to the shoulders. Very, very confident first lift there from Trey. And when you historically look at the best log lifters we've seen, they have huge shoulders, huge triceps, big power bellies, and big, solid, strong legs. Trey ticks all those boxes. Look at that. That was a confident first lift. Maxime Boudreau is going to go up 20 pounds. And now 420 on the Austrian Oak. It's going to be Rob Kearney is going to make his second attempt now. Kearney at 400 pounds before we go up to 420 with Maxime Boudreau. So yeah, we mentioned this yesterday. You may see athletes coming in before other athletes take their first attempts. Second attempt now for Rob Kearney, your overall leader, after day number one. Up to the shoulders, no problem. Big, powerful leg drive. And that will count. So Rob Kearney hits 400 pounds. And Rob's changed his technique. Rob used to split jerk the log. He doesn't have the confidence in his tricep to do that right now. He's gone, reverted back to more of a, a traditional kind of push press. It's working well. Yevgeny Markov is getting set to make his second attempt. Take another look at Rob Kearney's successful lift at 400. Here's Yevgeny Markov at 400, his second. Clean's good. And Markov will have it. It's a good lift there. He had to work hard for that. The tricep strength, more than enough there to push the weight, hold it fixed overhead and get the down signal from Carl Gillingham. JF Caron will come back out at 400 now. Had to really work hard on the press. Not as explosive as Rob, but the tricep strength was there. Maxime Boudreau has yet to lift. 
J.F. Corona is right now listed as the next man out at 400, and here he comes for his second attempt. Interesting thing for me as well is that Lissis and um, Novikov both haven't come out yet. Caron will now be the third man to make his second attempt, and we still have five men who have yet to lift once. I think the real favorites on this event have to be Luke Stockman and Bobby Thompson. They've got the pedigree. They've put the biggest logs up overhead in competition. Second attempt for J.F. Caron. And that will count. Good lift there for JF. He didn't look like he's got a tremendous amount more. But making sure of that 400. I'm not sure he's got a 20 pound jump in him. So we look at this, the clean is good. It's, it's coming down to the press for JF. Great leg drive, triceps having to work extremely hard there. And I'll be surprised if he can manage a 20 pound jump on that. Now Maxime Boudreau, who's there chalking up his shoulders behind J.F. Caron, will make his first attempt at 420 pounds. Maxime's really impressed over the last year. His log lifting is extremely good. He has some events he is absolutely world class in. A couple of events where he allows himself to drop those points, and that's a, that's a real common trait for many, many of these athletes. You go to different shows, different events, and the positions change all the time. But it's why guys like Lissis are so well respected and win so many titles. They don't have those weaker events. There's a look at the Austrian Oak. Not just terribly heavy, but just a gorgeous looking implement. There's a lot of hours of work that went into that. Maxime Boudreau making his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Came really close to qualifying in 2020. He was at the Arnold Strongman USA in Santa Monica. Came down to the final event and he just missed earning a qualifying spot that year. That has certainly motivated him to get here to Columbus, Ohio and compete in this event. And here he is in his first attempt, 420 pounds. And that is good for Boudreaux. Good first lift there for Maxime. 420 pounds. And that will put him on top of the standings right now in this event. And we still have four men left to make their first attempts. We've had three men make two. Second look here at Boudreaux's good lift at 420. See all the athletes using every bit of kit they're allowed. So they're all using the big leather belts. They've got the knee sleeves on, the elbow sleeves, the wrist wraps. These are all gonna help protect their body as much as possible and allow them to lift as much as possible, including the, the grippy tops you can see there. There's a little rubber bobbles on, to, on the top that Luke's wearing. And it just helps on the clean. It just allows the, the log to stick a little bit easier. They need tremendous hip power to drive that log from the lap up to the shoulders. And we were talking off air about the difference between a log and a barbell. Mm -hmm. A barbell, you can keep your head upright. You can look forward. The log is so, the, the diameter of the log forces you to look up in the air, and that's why it's so much harder. You'll see incredible weightlifters come and try a log and really struggle because of the implement. 420 now for Luke Stoltman looking to tie Maxime Boudreau. This is Stoltman's first attempt. So I'm interested in seeing this. Luke had a great year on the log last year. He's chasing that world record. Let's see what kind of shape he's in with his first lift here. 420 pounds. Wow. Oh, just a little stumble there. 
but the speed that he got the log from the shoulders up to lockout, he looked very comfortable. Luke Stolman with a successful lift, and like his brother, struggled a little bit, but was able to, to correct the mistake. And he is tied for the lead now with Maxime Boudreau. You could see the power was there. He just got to get used to the flooring, used to the environment. Look how quickly he gets it to the locked out position. Just a little stumble. I think he's going to come back and make that second rep look a lot better. We saw that with JF yesterday. JF on the squat, his first rep was exceptionally easy, but there was a little bit of wobble in the knees. His next rep, he came back and, and it looked even easier. Alexei Novikov will be out next to go at 420. Comes in in second place overall. Trails Rob Kearney by two points. So depending on what happens in this event, Alexei Novikov could find himself on top of the overall standings. But remember, Martins Litsis is only three points back of Rob Kearney, and he may have something to say about that as well in this event. These are big weights that these guys are jumping in at. 420 pounds. This is not far off Novikov's PB. We saw how impressive he was on the dumbbell yesterday. Let's see if that explosive power crosses over onto the log. And this crowd is definitely behind this man, Alexei Novikov, first attempt at 420. Nice clean, needs to get stable. And no problem. Move. Great reaction from the crowd again. The real battle for this log is between Novikov and Lissis in terms of the overall score. There's a good opening lift there for Novikov. Now a three-way tie for first place in this event right now. Maxime Boudreau, Luke Stoltman, and Alexei Novikov have all successfully lifted for 20. And now here comes the Dragon, Martins Litsis, up for his first attempt at 420. Now if there was one event I could see guys getting a few extra points on Lissis, it's the log. I expect him to almost be top three on every single event. This is the one event that a couple of guys can beat him. Let's see what kind of shape he's in. He always manages to bring his best when it counts. You know, you mentioned how he really has no weakness. His MO at the Rogue Invitational, he didn't win an event until the final one, but everything else was inside the top three, top five, and that's what allowed him to be in position to win that competition. And so far, he's finished third in the first two events. Plenty of people on hand to cheer him on. I'm sure if he finished third on every single event, but he won overall, he'd be very happy. First attempt, Lietzis at 420. So let's see how Lietzis' log lift is looking. And that is good. Oh. Great first lift there by Martins Lysis, 2019 World's Strongest Man. He's been second here at the Arnolds before he wants to take this title. It's the one title he hasn't yet won. He looks well prepared. And that leaves Bobby Thompson as the only man who has yet to lift. Take another look at Martins' successful lift at 420. Tom Stolman is going to be back out on the floor now for his second attempt at 420. So Bobby Thompson is going to sit and wait for at least another lift. Bobby clearly feeling confident in the warm-up lifts. This is a very important lift for Tom. He didn't have a good first. They actually thought he did well on the squat. I never expected him to get big points on the squat, but he maximized his performance on there. The dumbbell cost him. He cannot afford to miss this lift. Stolman looking to tie for the lead with Boudreaux, his brother, Alexei Novikov, and Martins Lietzis. Second time out on the floor for Tom, 420 pounds on that Austrian oak.
Clean is good. Let's see what the press is looking like. Oh, and that, that one looked like, better than the first. That's more like it from Tom Stoltman. The first lift we questioned. Tom coming back like the champion he is there. Very, very impressive on his second attempt. 420, moving much more like a warm up. And he only has one attempt remaining. As we have had four men go through two of their three lifts. He was just rock solid in the foot department this time. There was no stumbling. Big, big difference in terms of the overall performance on the log there. Rob Kearney is going to be up next for his third and final lift. Alexei Novikov and Martins Litsis, the two men directly behind him in the overall standing, still have two lifts remaining, so they could make up some big points on Rob in this event. Yeah, Rob will be frustrated because this was at one time his favorite event. He said he's going to be damage control this time round. 420 pounds is still a, a huge weight. It wasn't that long ago this was the world record. When I first got into the sport, this type of weight was the world record. Now, almost every athlete is lifting it. Final attempt for Rob Kearney. Come on, and Rob. And he has it. There we go. He's happy. A great way to finish up this event for Rob Kearney here. The great thing to hear there is that he's happy. That's so important. It's not always about winning and placing first. You've got to be proud of your own performance. He would have had a game plan coming into this. Day one has been absolutely perfect for Rob. Yevgeny Markov is now going to make his third and final attempt. 420 still on the log. And Markov just not able to press that out. And comes up gimpy there. It looks like he's grabbing at his left leg, and he is not going to make another attempt. So Markov will wind up with a score of 400. Hopefully nothing too bad. It looked like he jarred his knee a little. These huge weights, it's a very fast, explosive movement, that knee dip. If you time it wrong, it can be quite painful. Hopefully it's nothing more than that. The J.F. Carone will be up next for his third and final attempt. Now, Bobby Thompson has yet to lift. Carone will be the third man to close out his event here. Let's take a look at Yevgeny Markov. Yevgeny, the 2020 Arnold Amateur Champion. That's how he got his invite to this show. It is a big step up when you're going from the amateur level to competing on the pro scene. He's a great athlete. I've seen him do very well in some shows. But when you come to this level, everyone's a monster. Every single athlete, their weakest events, they're still good and high level athletes. This will be a good learning experience for Markov as he will He's gonna get go back away to work for the rest back. of the season. Absolutely. First time competing at the Arnolds, it is a learning curve. Here's J.F. Carone, third and final attempt for him, 420 pounds on the log. J.F. needs this. Oh, oh and Carone grabbing his right knee as he went That's down. Not That's not good. And let's hope he's okay as Rob Kearney looks on hoping that JF is going to be all right, but that just did not look good for JF Carone, who crumbled under that log. He went down fast. That, to me, looks like a patellar issue, potential quad tear. We'll hope that JF Carone is all right, but he will have a final score of 400 pounds. That's something you just don't want to see. such a huge weight when you're leaning back in that position 
you know, you don't teach someone to, to lift an Olympic bar like that, but the log, the thickness of the diameter, it forces you to lean back more. And then you just saw his leg just give out. I hope it's nothing more than cramp, possibly a small tear. But that, that looked nasty. You saw Bobby Thompson back there. He still has yet to lift. There he is. And we are hearing that he's going to open, open at 440. Opening on 440, Bobby Thompson, the current American log lift record holder. Yesterday, we heard from the athletes. They were talking about the events. They were going through it, and Bobby Thompson said, well, event three, it's a log, and I'm Bobby Thompson. <laughs> so he's pretty confident. I, I think he's a confident man when it comes to log lifting. Bobby got into the competition when Mateusz Kieliszkowski had to withdraw because of an injury, and now here he is looking to possibly win an event, opening at 440 pounds. Well, out, out of the five events we have in this contest, this is the one he believes he can win. He wants to push the likes of Luke Stoltman. Thompson looking on. Four hundred forty pounds will be his opening lift. This is a tough position for Bobby. He's got to wait now. Opening on four hundred and forty pounds. There is Rob Kearney, who is done with his three lifts. 420 pounds was his final attempt. He made that. He came in after back-to-back second-place finishes on day number one with 18 total points. He had a two-point lead over Alexei Novikov, who comes in in second place overall. Novikov has only lifted once. He did make 420, and then Kearney led Martins Litsis by three points. Leeds also has only made one lift. That was successful at 420 pounds. So Rob Kearney looking like he probably will surrender the overall lead to maybe that man, Martins Leeds, or Alexei Novikov, depending on how this event plays out. It's going to be interesting watching the battle between Novikov and Lysis. I think Novikov in his head is going to be thinking, stay with him. Lysis is going to want to get one place minimum ahead just to make sure they're starting to level up on those points. Two events remain after this. We have the timber carry coming up. And then after that, it's the stone to shoulder. A good crowd on hand here at the Greater Columbus Convention Center for Day two of the Arnold Strongman Classic, second and final day of competition. Sean Woodland and Lawrence Chalet here with you. Glad you're with us today. There's a bit of a delay as they uh, tend to JF Caron. But so far, this is playing out the way we more or less expected as far as this event is concerned. Yeah, you know, the big log lifters are all still in there. Uh, the battle for the overall is still between Novikov and Alyssis. Rob Kearney, unfortunately, is going to be giving away that lead that he got himself after day one. But it's good to see an athlete happy with his performance. You know, I think sometimes we come in and it, unless we're winning, mm -hmm. we're not happy. It's nice to see someone solid performance and he's pleased with what he did. He, let's remember, Rob Kearney's coming back from testicular cancer and a tricep injury, a, a torn tricep. To be back at this level just competing is one thing. To be back and leading after the first day shows the resolve of the man. What a performance he's put in. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll pick up action when it resumes here in event number three, the Austrian Oak for Max Waits. So stay with us here at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic.
We are ready to resume action here at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic. We are in the middle of event number three. Sean Woodland and Lauren Chalet here with you. Thanks so much for staying with us through that break, everybody. Just want to get you updated on what has been going on. JF Carone had to get helped off the competition floor. He was able to give the fans here uh, a thumbs up as he exited. He will not be able to compete for the rest of the competition, and we certainly wish him all the best. We are in the middle of event number three. It is the Austrian Oak for Max Waite. Now the big question is, how do these men handle the sizable delay that we have just been through? Because Bobby Thompson was just about ready to go out and make his first attempt. Yeah, obviously this is a tough situation to, to be in, but these are professional athletes, and I know JF personally, he will want these guys to get on with this competition. He's one of the toughest men I've met. He'll be back, but we need to get on with the show. And it's going to be tough. Some of the guys will cope with the pressure of this better than others. There is talk backstage of people saying, oh, you know, the event should be scrapped. JF doesn't want that. We don't want that. We want to see the best man go on to win. So it's coping with those nerves, making sure you're still trying to stay warm. 45-minute delay is not ideal, but they need to stay calm. They need to focus on what they need to do. The weight on the log is now 440. We have had six men successfully lift 420 pounds, and we've had three men all make their three attempts. Luke Stoltman was one of the six men who has hit 420 pounds. His brother Tom also lifted 420. And this one looked better than his opening lift at 400 pounds. Alexei Novikov, his opening attempt was at 420. The man who sits in second place overall coming into this event made this look pretty easy. Martins Litsis, he currently sits in third place overall. This was his first attempt. He also opened it 420 pounds. And Maxime Boudreau is through one attempt. He hit 420 as well. And then overall leader Rob Kearney, who is done with this event, his third and final attempt was at 420 pounds, and he was extremely happy with this lift. We are set to resume competition. Bobby Thompson, as Rob Kearney looks on, is now getting to the floor for his opening attempt at 440 pounds. So Bobby's had to make sure he's kept warm backstage. And this is kind of, you know, it's a distracting thing to have to go through. The athletes sort of plan their, their jumps that they're going to make backstage. But you can't wait 45 minutes to an hour between lifts. So he's had to go back, do a couple of lifts, Let's see what headspace he's in and how this log is looking. 440 pounds, this is 200 kilos. Opening. The first attempt for Bobby Thompson. Come on, let's have a so it's up to the shoulders, no problem. And that is easy. Great solid lift there. Bobby Thompson. Proving he is here to log lift. He said, when you're talking about log lift, you're talking about Bobby Thompson. He's showing us there. And as we said earlier yesterday, to kick things off, we heard from the athletes as they talked about the different events, and Bobby Thompson said, well, event three, it's a log, and I'm Bobby Thompson. So we know he expects to do extremely well in this event. So opening attempt for Bobby Thompson is good at 440. One more look at that. There is Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is on hand to watch things here. Still looks like he could get out there and compete. <laughs> Trey Mitchell will be the next man up. This will be his second attempt. He made 400 earlier, and he is going to go after the 440-pound log. Trey's open at 400, look very comfortable. 40-pound jump. I can see he 
I think he can do it. He's ready. Arnold thinks Come he can on, do it. Let's help out Trey. I think Trey can do it. Come on, Trey. And Mitchell yes. locks yes. it out. Yes. He gets it. I told you. I told you. <laughs> well done. You got to let the Austrian out in front of the Austrian out. Trey Mitchell nailed it. Now, Trey Mitchell in Trey front of Arnold Schwarzenegger, governor. and he gets congratulated by the Austrian Oak. It's got to be a career highlight for Trey Mitchell right there. If you're uh, someone involved in the Iron Game, we've all seen Schwarzenegger's performances from the past. Inspired many, many lifters, many, many people. Many people just to get involved in fitness, period. Whether it's strongman or powerlifting, CrossFit, whatever it is. There's D. Snyder. Well, everyone oh, frontman of Twisted here. Sister. We got a cast of characters here. So we've had two men successful at 440 pounds. There is that Austrian oak. If you heard Kiki Dixon talking about that earlier when we started this event, Steve Slater was in charge of putting this uh, implement together and making sure that it was not only something that tested these athletes, but something that was pleasing to the eye. And he lost 25 pounds stressing over the construction of the Austrian oak. I think he did a fantastic job. Here comes Maxime Boudreau for his second attempt. He was good at 420 on his opener. He'll make an attempt at 440 pounds. And I think Maxime's going to get this. His log lifting's been impressive. His opener was solid. He looks bigger than I've seen him before as well. He's packing on some size. Good clean. Just needs to stabilize. Lots of power out of those legs. And then and Boudreau just stumbles with that now. Able to save oh, it, but... Too much. He's going to compose himself, give him another attempt. But... I've got to say, that just looked heavy. Arnold Schwarzenegger looking on as Maxime Boudreau will make a second attempt. Maxime, countryman to JF, maybe letting things affect him a little bit more than he would. Just not able to get it. Not but today. Boudreau will wind up with 420 pounds as he bows out on his second attempt. I've definitely seen Maxime do better than that on the log before, but... You know, we've got to cope with these situations. He'll be disappointed there. That will bring up Alexei Novikov for his second attempt at 440 pounds. Now, this is the interesting battle. This is there. He's staying cool. Novikov, if he can get us this, this is a big log lift for Alexei Novikov. 200 kilos, 440 pounds. I saw him hit 420 at Europe's Strongest Man last year. He failed the 440. We were talking about it earlier. Novikov is just trying to stay close right now to Martins Leeds. If he hits that lift, it'll go a long way towards helping him achieve that. Yeah, absolutely. His tactics are stick with Lissis. He doesn't need to beat him. He needs to tie with him. That's got to be the tactics that he's using for this show. He's ahead overall, only a slim lead, one point. But he'll want to remain that one point ahead going into event number four. And he was only two points back of Rob Kearney for the overall lead, and Kearney is done with this event. His score was 420 on his third and final attempt. Huge cheers for Alexei Novikov every time he comes out to lift. Second attempt at 440 for Alexei Novikov. Excellent clean there. Has he got the power to punch this overhead? And there it is, almost. Oh, he doesn't get it. Doesn't he was it so close. 
couldn't quite keep it stable. Referee's hand did not come down. Oh, I thought he had that. He He's knows making another attempt here. One more attempt. The clean was very, very efficient. Got it straight up to the shoulders, no problem at all. Didn't waste energy. It was good power from the legs, just couldn't quite hold it locked out. And now that energy level is just drained. It's not going to happen. Great effort. Novikov thanking the crowd. Now his final score will be 420, which ties him with Rob Kearney. So that's good news with Kearney. And it's great news for Martins Litsis, who still has two attempts remaining. And he will be up next going for 440. This is a huge lift. If Lysias gets this, he knows he's in the driving seat. He doesn't need to worry about the overall win on this event. This is his battle here. Get ahead of Novikov, get ahead of Rob Kearney. Lift number two for Litis here at 440. This to tie Trey Mitchell and Bobby Thompson. And Leeds has it. it. Great lift there from the 2019 World's Strongest Man. Martins Leeds is 440 pounds. Martins Leeds hits his second lift. And now the question is how many points will he be able to pick up on Novikov and Kearney? This was a great lift. He looks like he's got more in the tank. Tom Stoltman will be out next. This will be his third and final lift. And he will try to tie for the lead at 440. The Tom's second lift was so much better than that first. The keys for Tom here are balance. He needs to make sure his clean is efficient. He doesn't want to be stumbling around. If he can keep those feet firmly planted to the ground, apply maximum force through those legs, drive hard with the shoulders and triceps, he can get this lift. And if he does, that helps Lisi's even more. The more men that can hit this weight, the more points that Lisi's will be able to pick up. Well, watching on the two last ahead lift, he looks like he's got more still. It didn't look max effort. Tom Stoltman at 440. He'll be thinking, if Tom can get this, and I can go a little heavier. And just not able to press it out. Right back to work. Now he's going to think twice about it and take a break. I think that's the right thing. Just take a moment, recompose. Needs a little bit more power out of those legs this time. Needs to really drive. Just can't get it overhead, but is able to keep it at the shoulders. But now the log is down again. And I don't think we'll see it now. He's going to try a third time, but it's extremely rare that we see someone lift after failing once, never mind twice. Third attempt here on this weight. Stoltman just doesn't have enough. So three solid attempts at 440. Tom Stoltman will have a final result of 420 pounds. We still have Trey Mitchell, Luke Stoltman, Leetzies, and Thompson still alive here. So Tom, very powerful on the clean here. Just didn't look like he got enough out of his legs on that first attempt, requiring his shoulders and triceps to work that little bit harder, which is going to fatigue you quicker. It's really important to get that first attempt spot on. You don't want to waste energy. And obviously we saw there three attempts. He's draining more and more energy for the whole competition.
I love it. I am so happy that we are back again. You know, when the co coronavirus hit us two years ago, we said, we'll be back. And we are back. And so I'm so delighted that we have the world's strongest man here, that we have all the thousands of fans here. We want to say thank you to Rogue for being the sponsor of this event. Thank you to the athletes for doing such an incredible job and for inspiring us. Thank all of you. Thank you. Arnold Schwarzenegger, ladies and gentlemen, are you not entertained? Are you ready to see some more weights lifted? Maxime Boudreau is back out. Failed his first time at 440. And this will be his third and final attempt. Yeah, the athletes get three attempts. He's allowed to come back and attempt this weight once again. He needs to get this right first time. He was close the last time. He's had a good break. And we'll see if he can get 440 this time. Really needs to use the legs. And Boudreaux just cannot lock it out. Fraction low there, just needed it an inch higher to allow himself to press that weight out. It's that point that's just right there at about 90 degrees, and if you can get past it, you can, you're usually home free, and he just got stuck right there. Alexei Novikov, who also failed at 440, will make another attempt for his third and final lift. He was very, very close on that first attempt. And in, the, in terms of the whole competition, this is just make or break now. If he fails this, he knows the chances are going to be slim of catching this. Is. The frame carry and then the stone to shoulder are the two events remain. He is a good frame carrier, but he's had issues with grip strength. And there's no straps on this frame this year, so he'll want to be as close as possible after this log lift event. He'll believe he has a chance on the frame, but going on past performances, Lysis has the better performances. And then it'll come down to that stone. How much do you want it? Alexei Novikov, 440 pounds. Failed on his first try. This will be his second and final attempt. He's the At kind of lifter that can come back and get this. We saw it do yesterday in the dumbbell, missing a rep and then coming back with a good one, and Novikov oh. just isn't going to be able to get it. But yesterday during that dumbbell for Max reps, he got seven good repetitions, actually failed on his seventh attempt, came back and got his seventh good rep on his eighth attempt. It really was a tremendous performance. And the way the organizers of the Arnolds select these events, starting off with a squat for Max, that's draining that leg power. He's a very explosive athlete. He went on, hit seven reps, as you say, on the dumbbell. I think that fatigue is starting to catch up. His legs look tired on that attempt there. Well, Luke Stoltman will be making his second lift, and he is increasing the weight on the log. He's going up to 450. So like I said earlier, 450 pounds. This was the weight in 2014 as Druna Saviskas, probably the greatest log lifter ever, hit four reps in competition. Luke was chasing Zadrunas' record last year, got very, very close to breaking it. He's proven he's one of the best log lifters. He needs to make this go up. Luke Stolman also making his first ever appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic, along with his brother, his younger brother, Tom. Yeah, two brothers competing in the Arnolds, two brothers that have competed in World's Strongest Man final together. What an incredible family. A 450 now for Luke Stoltman. His first successful lift was at 420, so a 30 pound jump here for the Highland Oak. There's a 
There's his brother Tom looking on. When you think about the ideal shape for log lifting, look at this man, huge legs, big thick midsection, huge shoulders, huge triceps. He has all the things needed to put massive weights overhead. This for the lead, 450. Very efficient on the clean there. 450 pounds. And Stoltman and has it. There we go. Luke Stoltman enjoying himself now at the Arnold Classic. Day one did not go to plan, but he's starting day two strong. 450 as his second lift. What's he got left? Rob Kearney in the background there was applauding that effort. This is picture perfect. Absolutely spot on. Elbows and wrists in line, drives the head through for the lockout, and you can just see the confidence oozing out of him there. Talking things over with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Luke Stolman, your new leader by 10 pounds, 450 on his second lift. And now Bobby Thompson will come out and try to tie Luke Stoltman. Thompson was the last man to get out there on the competition floor. He opened at 440 and made it look pretty easy. Bobby's opener looked very solid. This is only a small jump up. I expect this to go up no problem. Bobby Thompson to tie Luke Solman at 450. And again, a very solid clean. And that goes up no problem. <laughs> Bobby Thompson looking very powerful there on the log. Can these two men push up to something crazy? The American Nightmare with two really good lifts here. Look at that. Excellent execution. Great power off the legs and hips. Solid triceps to lock out. And he walked away like a man that's focused. Trey Mitchell will be out for his third and final lift. And Big Tex is going up to 460. Mitchell, another man who's making his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Last year he won the Shaw Classic, two place back in August. Four hundred sixty pounds for Trey Mitchell. This for the lead. We are looking at serious numbers now. Needs to get it sat right, right in tight to the throat. The head will be looking straight up to the ceiling. Needs to dip and drive hard with the legs and hips. He's got this, press it through. And Mitchell oh, trying to on. stabilize. Stabilize, lock out, hold it. He has it. He gets the down signal. Great save from Trey Mitchell, and he is your leader right now as Bobby Thompson may have something to say about that. He has one lift remaining. That was a fabulous lift. He had to work hard. He hit it perfectly, but just lost that line. Had to fight hard to stabilize overhead. Referee gave him the down. Congratulations there from Evan Singleton, another incredible strong man on the scene. He will want to get to the Arnolds next year. But that moment there. One more look at it. Everything looked great until that wobble at the top, and what a fight from Trey Mitchell. I thought he was gonna lose it at one point. He just managed to step forward. 
Look at this, it was strong, and that swabble back, and then he fights hard, gets his head through, momentary pause, and the referee gave him the down signal. And the belt goes flying. <laughs> Luke Stoltman, for his final attempt, he's going up to 470. Martins Leitzis and Bobby Thompson are the two men who have yet to make their third attempts here. This will be the third attempt for Stoltman. And it'll be interesting to see if Lissis is planning a third lift. He's done what he needs to do on this event. We talk about how consistent he is. So we've got Luke Stoltman there, just eating a cereal bar, just keeping his energy levels up. Works with a nutritionist, works with a coach. These guys take everything very professionally these days. So long gaps between lifts, long gaps between events. They're just trying to snack on food, make sure they keep those energy levels as high as possible throughout the day. Take a look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. We just heard from Matt Eisman, the floor announcer, that Leitzis has elected to pass on his final attempt. So as you said, he has done enough here because the two men he was chasing are Novikov and Kearney, and he has bested them by 20 pounds. So Leitzis might wind up at least in second place here, possibly first. Meanwhile, we have to take care of Luke Stoltman's final lift, who successfully lifted 420 on his opening attempt and then moved up to 450 and hit that. This is Trey Mitchell with our best lift so far at 460, and he really had to fight that log overhead to make it count. Down signal from the referee, and look at what it means to him. All these athletes want to be on the Arnold stage, proving they belong here. They might not be the best at every single event, but each one of these is a world-class athlete, and they will have individual events. They want to prove how strong they are. They want to show everyone what they are capable of. And you see there what it meant to Trey Mitchell. And this man as well, Luke Stoltman, very, very disappointed in his first day. He wanted to come in with a big squat. He performed well on the dumbbell, but he still felt he was capable of better. This is the one event he sees himself as the best in the world at. Can he prove it today? 470 for the lead. And remember, Bobby Thompson, since Leitz has passed, is the last man after Luke Stoltman to go. One thing to remember, people watching back home may say these guys have done more than this in the gym. We've seen them lift more. Let's remember this is after a squat for Max. It's after the dumbbell for reps. Their legs are tired. Hathor Bjornsson there with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hathor's lost so much weight, he looks like quarter Thor. <laughs> he looks great. He looks totally different. He was here with us yesterday, and he's ready to go with that matchup he has with Eddie Hall coming up later in the month. But now it's Luke Stoltman at 470. Stoltman! 470 for the lead for Luke Stoltman. This is to put himself back into first place on the log lift and climb up the leaderboard with some big points. Efficient clean as always from Luke. And, and no wow, that was problem! The, best of the three lifts we've seen. From the Highland Oak, Luke Stoltman. He looked like he had plenty more. And he is fired up, and rightfully so, because right now he stands to win this event. But remember, the American Nightmare. Maybe trying to shatter that man's dreams as Bobby Thompson has one lift remaining. That was the best of the three lifts we've seen. Look at this. Everything perfect. The feet are steady on the floor. They don't move. Perfect clean. Drives hard with the legs. 
faultless lift there. Rooted to the floor, good extension through the ankles. Hips are powerful, legs were powerful. Strong through the core, strong in the triceps. Absolutely spot on there from Luke Stoltman. Well, Bobby Thompson is going to jump up 10 pounds for his final lift. This will be the final lift of this event. And it will be for the win. Thompson finished ninth overall the last time he was, he was here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. That was in 2020. Then he was ninth at the 2021 World Strongest Man. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this could be an American record that Bobby's going for right now. I know it's close to this type of number. Personal record attempt, so that's making me think this is the American record. Four hundred eighty pounds for Bobby Thompson. For a personal record and the event win here as he looks to beat Luke Stoltman by ten pounds. Just using the chalk there, making sure the hands are as dry as possible. He wants everything to be perfect. Tilts the log into the position. Bobby Thompson, as the crowd comes to his feet, for the event win. You can just feel the chills. This crowd is going to raise Bobby's level. He's a confident man. He believes in his log lifting abilities. Can he get this? It's up to the shoulders. Struggling with Rest. it and just doesn't have it. So close there. Second attempt won't go. He was so close on that first attempt. One more try for the win. But Thompson doesn't have it. And that means that Luke Stoltman is going to win this event at 470 pounds. Trey Mitchell will finish in second. Thompson will take third. Martins Leetzies, another top five finish in fourth. That consistency that we talk about, but that's the man when it comes to the log lift today. Luke Stoltman winning a max log lift once again. Great to see the Highland Oak soaking up this experience, competing at the Arnold Classic for the first time, winning the Austrian Oak. The Highland Oak conquers the Austrian Oak and picks up his first event win here of the competition. That will help him in the overall standings as we have just two events remaining. One more look at the lift that won it for Luke Stoltman at 470. And for me, this really was the best lift of the competition. He saved his best for the third attempt. Absolutely perfect technique there. He looked like he had plenty more. Kiki Dixon is with the Highland Oak. Luke, first time with Arnold Strongman Classic, iconic event. Pumped crowd, huge crowd. You've got the icon here himself, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger, cheering you on. How do you handle those nerves? Wow, um, the first first attempt was a little bit sketchy. I've dreamt for a decade of being on this stage, of lifting the Austrian Oak in front of Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had in the sport. That was incredible. And fair play to Bobby Thompson, he went for the win. I was worried because that boy is a nightmare. He is an American nightmare and he is super strong. So my heart goes off to him and all the other guys. You know, a special shout out to Alexei Novikov who's here battling through what's going on in his country. It's absolutely amazing. Big love to all the Ukrainian people. 
I'm so happy to be here representing Scotland. It's amazing. I'm, I'm almost emotional because that meant so much to me. I have the strongest shoulders in the world and I just proved it there. Yes, you did. Now, obviously, it's no secret that you are one of the all-time greatest with this implement. But what is your secret to getting that weight up? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just something inside me that just makes me want to do something truly spectacular. And I think that what I just did there was very spectacular. Um, you know, I think about my mum. She's not here with us, so I need to do her proud. I need to do the Scottish people proud. And it's just, it gets me. You know, I'm an emotional guy. I always wear my heart in my sleeve, and I love this sport. This is, this is my job, and it's the most insane feeling in the world. I love this. Well, this sport loves you too. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. There are definitely a lot of proud Scots right now after watching Luke Stoltman win this event. 470 pounds. Trey Mitchell will take second. Bobby Thompson had the winning weight almost over his head, but he's going to settle for third at 450. And Martins Leeds, he's doing what he does. Finishes inside the top five yet again. Rob Kearney, good enough for a tie for fifth with Novikov and Boudreaux. Overall standings now. Rob Kearney is still your overall leader, but only a half point ahead of Martins Litis, who leapfrogs Alexei Novikov for second place. Novikov now sits in third, and Luke Stoltman rocketing up the overall standings. He sits in fourth place overall, a half point ahead of Bobby Thompson. Three events are down here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. We have two remaining. Luke Stoltman, the Highland Oak, conquers the Austrian Oak. A lot more to come here. Stay with us, everybody, at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic.
we are through three events here at the Arnold Strongman Classic, and each one has provided us with some incredible moments. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Sean Woodland and Dr. Bill Crawford here after that Austrian Oak for Max Weight. And I think we finally just caught our breath, and that was unbelievable to watch. Wow, that was fantastic. <laughs> Luke nailed a 470 lift, and I think he had a lot in the tank. I think another 10 or 20 pounds, maybe even up to the magic 500-pound mark. He looked phenomenal. What he did do, too, is he catapulted himself way up into the standings with that great win. Love to see that. Tight competition. Bobby tried to throw the knockout punch, though, and come on with a 480. Super event. Yeah, it was a blast to watch. Let's take a look at the results for that last event. Luke Stolman, courtesy of that 470-pound lift, will win the event. And as Dr. Bill said, he moves way up the overall standings. Trey Mitchell finishes in second. Bobby Thompson did try to win on his final lift at 480, but was unable to lift that log. So he will settle for a third-place finish. I'd ask you a generic question like what stood out. But obviously, it was Luke Stoltman there on that final lift. Yes, it was. And we had Arnold here watching and, and uh, gave a lot of encouragement. Luke was very, very methodical with this. He had perfect foot position. He drove right through the implement and got it overhead without a wobble and just like, locked out on it. That's what was shocking about it. It wasn't that he did it. It was how he did it. He didn't have a lot of leg drive on the lift either. He said, I have the world's strongest shoulders, and right now, I don't think anybody's going to contest that one. He that absolutely lift. backed that up. Meanwhile, Martins Leeds, just doing what Martins does, staying inside the top five. He finishes in fourth. He is creeping closer to the overall lead. Yes, he's a half a point behind, and he did what he had to do. He uh, got a really strong log lift, got the 440, and he got ahead of uh, Novikov on that lift, which was exactly what he wanted to do. So putting that distance between he and Novikov and catching up to Kearney a little bit more, he's just doing that slide. He's doing what he does. He keeps coming. He won't go away. You know, Bobby Thompson is the American nightmare, but right now Martins Leeds is a nightmare <laughs> for the guy currently sitting atop the overall standings, and that is Rob Kearney, who did enough to hang on to the top spot on the leaderboard, but only by a half a point now over Martins Leeds, who leapfrogs Alexei Novikov into second place. Novikov down in third, and then Luke Stoltman, courtesy of the 10 points that he picks up for his event win, now sits in fourth place overall. How about Rob Kearney, after three events, still hanging on to the overall lead, but this next event might finally knock him off of that top spot. I mean, it could, but he finds himself still in the lead, and he was really happy with his, with his performance on the log. That was his personal best since his injury, the tricep injury. He did exactly what he wanted to do, and a little bit more. That was his goal, and he got it. So again, very professional in the way he's lining this up. Got a huge squat. Got a, got a great second place finish in the dumbbell and then came on strong in the log. He's doing exactly what he wants to do. And meanwhile, Alexei Novikov, who had a great day one, follows it up with a solid performance here to start day number two. He is still very much alive for not only a spot on the podium, but possibly the win. Yes, he is. And he's, he always pulls out surprises, just like with the squat. He did something that people just didn't think he could actually do. We're not, we've kind of not counted him out on the, on, the, uh, on, on the walk, but I think you've got to think that maybe that's not his best event, but he's always full of surprises. He's a true professional. The best are the best because of certain reasons, and he's showing that today. Well, Rob Kearney is still your overall leader by half a point after three events, and he spoke with Kiki Dixon following event number three. Rob, you're going into the next event still on top of that leaderboard, the overall leader. Was this part of the plan? Are you kind of surprised? What are your thoughts? To be honest, when the events got announced, this was kind of the game plan going into it. I knew day one was going to be very strong for me. Um, for me, coming into the log, I'm really happy with that result. I hit 420 pounds, which is actually a PR uh, ever since my tricep surgery. So I'm really, really happy with that result. And, um, you know, really just try to keep in the pedal to the metal for these last two events and keep myself in podium position. We talked yesterday about how you feel regarding that carry. How do you do damage control from here? Um, the biggest thing is honestly, you know, it's a grip intense event. My biggest thing is if I can get it off the ground, I'm, I'm fast when I move with implements. So my entire goal is gonna be trying to outrun my grip. So if I can get that thing off the ground, I'm just gonna get my feet moving like Fred Flintstone and get up that ramp as quick as possible to try to get as many points as I can. But you wouldn't be uh, mad if the thing all of a sudden just ignited, would you? Oh no, I'd be fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, we'll see you out there. Thank you. 
looking forward to watching Rob Kearney and the rest of the strongmen compete in event number four, the frame carry. We'll have that in a little bit. But joining me now, USA weightlifter Joe Kovacs. Joe, thanks so much for being here. What do they have you doing here at the Arnold? Oh, good thing. I'm, I'm a late weightlifter, but a shot putter by, by trade. So I <laughs> shot put uh, full time. And uh, I'm here because, you know, this festival of strength is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm part of it, but my sport's a little bit different than this, and it's great to come here, especially at the Arnold, to see everything that's happening outside, but especially what Rogue's doing in here. They're really elevating the iron game in and outside the gym. It's absolutely amazing. You have an Olympic quad coming up. What does that look like for you? Yeah, every year's a little bit different, and now since COVID, the year, it got pushed back. So normally we have four years, now it's three. So it's actually a little bit easier because things are happening sooner. So right now we have a world championship coming up this uh, July. That's the big goal of the year. So um, luckily, I actually won the last world championship, so I automatically get in this one. It makes qualifications way easier. I can just you know, cruise on through. And we're really hoping to come home with the gold at that one. And of course, getting ready for 2024 in Paris. What needs to happen for you at the world championships in order for you to look back on that experience and say, yeah, that was a successful event for me? Yeah, it's always about executing the plan. And uh, the plan is, of course, always to get the gold, always to come away. But the way you do it is to kind of check off the list, check off the boxes. I want to come away and execute my technique be ready, prepared in the strength levels, and of course go in there with a competitive mindset to walk away with a PR. If I can have a PR at the World Championships, then I know I'm ready to, I should come home with the gold. Yeah, that just set you up very nicely. Other than the competitions you have and then the stuff you're doing here at the Arnold, what's next for you? Uh, well, the big ne next part for me is always get prepared for the next season, um, but also I, at this stage of my career, I'm always looking for the next quad. Uh, as an Olympic athlete, you're always judging everything in four-year terms. This time it's three. So you're always working way backwards. So of course, going to go through 2024 in Paris. And everybody, of course, wants me to go through 2028 because that's in Los Angeles. It'd be great to end my career as a shot putter on US soil and bring home a medal there. And I know Dr. Bill keeps trying to get you into the Highland Games. Any chance you might you might give that a, a yeah, whirl? You know what? Uh, he, he has a pretty good case for it. And it's actually <laughs> exciting. And I'll tell you, it, it's awesome because this, this festival of strength, there's so much crossover. I, I watched some of the Highland Games stuff last night. There's a lot of former throwers over there. We can trade some stories and we can learn from each other. There's no better feeling than that. Well, good luck uh, tossing that shot put and we'll be uh, cheering for you at the World Championships and uh, through this Olympic quad. Joe Kovacs, everybody, thanks so much for taking right, the time. I appreciate to it. Show. Enjoy the rest of the Arnold. Uh, meanwhile, going on uh, with the strongman competition, Alexei Novikov sits in third place. He's had a great competition so far, trying to keep the momentum that he gained on day number one. And he spoke with Kiki Dixon. Alexi, we are more than halfway through the Arnold Strongman Classic. Timber Carey up next. What are your specific goals for that event? Uh, I won one before. My injured win this event, but now I have a problem with my knee. And uh, I want to stay in top three in the podium after this event. And I hope I can do this. We look forward to seeing you out there. Thank you. Thanks, Alexi. Here's the schedule for the remainder of the day. We are already through event number three, the Timber Carry, event four coming up next. We have some Rogue Record Breaker stuff going on as well, and then we will close out the Arnold Strongman Classic with the stone to shoulder. Welcome back in Dr. Bill Crawford here. Event number four is that frame carry. What are the keys for athletes to be successful here? We heard Rob Kearney talking about trying to outrun his grip. Well, that's exactly what we talked about. You want to outrun your grip because the first thing you have to do is be able to hold on to it to be able to get the implement over the line. The other thing you want to do is be steady because if you get a, if you start too fast, it is on an incline, and unfortunately, you know you want to you want a good clean start so that you can move you want to move up the ramp. So uh, if if you start bouncing the front of that implement on the ramp, that'll stop you in your tracks. And if you have to put it down, it's really hard to pick it back up, and it's really hard to keep going after that. So the frame carry is event number four, and what that event will look like is that they will have to carry that nearly 900-pound frame up to the end of the ramp. There is a 30-second time limit, and when you look at that track, it's a long distance. Mateusz Kieliszkowski has a current record. He did it in seven seconds. Not that, 17, that, that seven, seven, Dr. Seconds. Bill. That was, that was smoke, and I was so happy to see that. And I was really looking forward to seeing him doing it this weekend. But, you know, he's not here. I'd like to say that Martins looks pretty good with this. He's the only athlete who's here who has actually gone to the top of the ramp. And he did that in about 17 yeah. seconds. But the fact that he's got experience with this implement and he knows the field, he knows the ramp, and he's done it several times before, I'd have to put my, my mark on him. One of my favorite questions to ask you during Strongman, because I know you love all these events, but what do you love about the frame carry? It's heavy. Yeah. I mean, this is the original big, scary, 
heavy implement that Terry Todd always talked about. This is the original. I mean, this has been going on since the beginning of uh, beginning of the Arnold, and we've seen some prolific performances. We've seen athletes like Sven Carlson ripping his T-shirt off at the top of it. <laughs> we've seen other athletes who made great runs with it. And then we've seen the very end of the competition being decided when Brian Shaw was, was uh, edged out by Zadrunas on the last event. And Zadrunas had to win, and he did in a shocking time. So he was good at it when he needed to be. This, this is an implement that has a ton of history, and I, I just love it for that reason. You mentioned wanting to keep an eye on Martins Lietzis for this event. Why do you think the Dragon does well here? He's got a big motor. He's really great with strength endurance, and this is strength endurance plus. You know, it's not only it's not only grip, it's will, it's ability to move. And he's going to breathe and, and take and take take his time through this in, in the way that he needs to to make sure he gets to the top. But this is exactly in his wheelhouse. So we're we're continuing to move through the events, and it looks better and better for Martins. Yeah, he could find himself in the overall lead after this next event. The overall standings after three events still have Rob Kearney on top of the overall leaderboard, but Leitzis is just a half point back, and Alexei Novikov is only a point and a half back, so he is still a contender for the top spot, and look what Luke Stoltman was able to achieve with that event win. Moves all the way up to fourth place. That's it for us. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, the fourth of five events here at the Arnold Strongman Classic, the frame carry. Stay with us, everybody.
take 880 pounds and walk it uphill. Couldn't be simpler, and it is the next test of the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic. Just two events remain here in Columbus, Ohio at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic. The Frame Carry is up next. Thank you so much for staying with us today, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet, and that is what awaits these athletes, that 880-pound frame that they have to lug up that ramp. And with just two events remaining, it's crunch time now for these athletes. Absolutely. I mean, Rob Kearney's still in the lead. No one expected that after three events, but this is the one event that we could see him drop back on. Spoke to him backstage, he talks about his chubby little hands. <laughs> you know, he's, he's an incredible strong man for such chubby little hands, but that is not a trait that you want when you are holding on to 880 pounds. And Rob Kearney is currently clinging to a half point lead over Martins Leetzies in the overall standings. Leetzies moving up from third place after that last event, leapfrogging Alexei Novikov who sits in third place. He's only two points back of Kearney. Luke Stoltman sits in fourth, and then Bobby Thompson rounding out the top five. Event four is the frame carry. You have to move it from that location up to the top of the ramp, and it's all about grip here. Grip strength, obviously, extremely important. There's no straps this year on this event, so grip is vital. But you need a strong back, you need strong legs, powerful hips. Those are the most important things when it comes to this type of event. For more on event four, let's go down to the competition floor. That's where Kiki Dixon is standing by. Guys, I feel like I'm standing in a small fort. This thing has a horseshoe right here for good luck, which is what the athletes are going to need if they want to beat Mateusz's seven second record that he set from wood that came from a barn right here in Ohio. Inside the handles have a light knurling. They've got to ascend 40 inches to get up the top. Let's see how they go. Obviously, you got to have strength. you got to have everything you talked about. But there's, got, there's some technique here. What are the keys to being successful at this event? Understanding how to hold the, the, the implement. What you don't want to see is that um, the implement tip forwards. If that tips forward and goes into the ramp, it's going to stop you dead in its track. So you try and have your hands slightly forward so that it will, if anything, tilt up slightly. And then it's just about fast feet. Go as far as you can before that grip gives out. The athlete tool be going in reverse order of the overall standing. So Rob Kearney will go last. Evgeny Markov, who comes in in ninth place overall, he will be the first man out. Who are you looking to be really successful in this event? Well, going on experience and, and past track record, Lissis is the man to beat on this. He's done the best performance out of these athletes. But Luke Stoltman has really worked his way back into this competition. Amazing performance there on the log lift. He's improved a lot on this type of event over the last few years. If he can put himself in a top three position on this, he may get himself onto the podium at the end of today. Martins Lee he's just a half point out of first place. He trails Rob Kearney, who's your current overall leader. Kearney had a great day one, back-to-back -back second place finishes to start off his competition, and then did some really good damage control in that last event to cling on to first place. Now, Evgeny Markov, will be the first man into that 880 pound frame, making his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. So Markov will show us how challenging this event is. 880 pounds, just lifting this type of weight is tremendous. He's off to a great start here, he's looking confident, but already the grip goes, and this is the big challenge for a lot of these guys. Lifting the weight is one thing, it's then holding on to it, and this is where the grip becomes so important. They have 30 seconds in order to make the ascent, and Markov looks like he's just stuck right now after getting off to a pretty decent start. He was moving well, his first initial lift was strong, but once that grip goes, it's a very frustrating feeling, and you can see there he's, he's had enough. Markov is 
done with his attempt. Got about a quarter of the way up the track there. And that will bring on Tom Stoltman. Markov a bit gimpy coming off that event. I was backstage just earlier, and the guys are feeling it. It's been a tough contest so far. There's not a single athlete back there walking without some type of limp. Strongman really is brutal. In the Arnolds, it just comes together with the most awkward, heavy, hard objects. It really is the contest to find out who is the strongest man on the planet. Tom Stoltman will be up next as Yevgeny Markov score at 14 feet, one inch. We mentioned earlier when I was talking to Dr. Bill on the Iron Game show, the record for this event is seven seconds. By Matusz Kieliuszkowski, the incredible Polish athlete. When it comes to moving with weights, that man is electric. I would have loved to have seen him on this event. And this is an event that you liked as well. Yeah, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have had this type of event. I wouldn't want to fancy trying it today, though. But it is an event I've got first-hand experience with. I understand how the implement works. I understand how challenging it is. The big thing for Tom here is going to be the grip. If his grip can hold out and he can do this in one go, that could be big, big points for the current world's strongest man who's not had his best performance this week at the Arnolds. He wants to show that he is one of the absolute best on the planet. Tom Stoltman up next here. And a big performance here will set him up nicely for the last event, the stone to shoulder. Easy lift, but this, you see how it's tilted down. That's not ideal. He's got the height, though, being six foot nine, being an advantage there. If someone like Rob Kearney did that, and it would go straight in to the platform. Stoltman made really good progress on that first effort. Now he's just inching that thing towards the top. He has 30 seconds. He really needs to be a little bit more forward so that the implement tilts up. It's so much easier to drag the back of the implement than the front end digging in to the ground. And Stoltman's going to call it. And he takes a look at his hands. And 880 pounds with no straps. That is, you may as well just take a cheese grater to your You'll palms. You'll see the guy's calluses rip mm -hmm. on this type of event. Very, very brutal. They'll be looking at their hands afterwards. They'll be extremely painful. 14 feet, one inch was the mark put up by Yevgeny Markov. And now they will measure for Tom Stoltman. Let's go back to Stoltman's effort here. Look at this, really powerful on the way up, but it straight away tilts forwards. And even though it didn't hit the floor, that's still going to pull at your hand. It starts pulling at the thumb, the index finger, and as soon as that starts ripping those fingers open, the grip is going to give out. We know from watching deadlift competitions, 880 pounds is a big deadlift. You don't want to be doing reps with it. <laughs> the frame is 881 pounds, and the distance on the ramp is 35 feet, or 10.7 meters. And as we mentioned before, Mateusz Kieliszkowski, who is not here, had to withdraw because of injury, is the record. Holder. Seven seconds truly is mind-boggling. I don't think I could run up that thing in seven <laughs> seconds. I think if we can see anything around the 15-second mark, that will be big, big points today. Is Maxime Boudreaux getting set? For most of these guys, they'll be trying to get the goal of finishing. Finish it, and if you can, finish it in one go. Boudreaux, who, he's had a great year. I, mean, I was just about to say that he finished third uh, last year, the world's strongest man. Maxime can do this. He moves well with weight. His grip is solid. <laughs> 26 feet 2 inches, the current mark to beat from Tom Stoltman, who was the last man to go. And here goes Maxime Boudreaux. 400 kilos, 880 pounds. He's moving fast. He's Great to... run here so far for Boudreaux, and he will make it to the top. Oh, what a time there by Just Maxime. under, I believe, eight seconds. So eight and a half. 
8.55. We'll have to check on that because I check believe that says 6.55, which would be a record, but if this is under seven seconds, this is a new record. And look how quick he's moving. That's an unofficial time. But he flew up that ramp. That was impressive. We'll wait for his official score. 8.41, now that's updated. So 8.41 seconds for Maxime Boudreaux. I'll tell you what, that could be a winning time right there. Exceptional performance by the Canadian. We still have six men left, but Maxime Boudreaux, who came in in seventh place overall. We saw what an event win did for Luke Stoltman. With one event remaining after this. The well, last time Martins Lissis was around the 17 second mark. So he's going to have to go some if he wants to take first place on this event. This Trey Mitchell. I said 15 seconds would be good points. I'll stand by that. That is an incredible time. 8.41 seconds for Maxime Boudreau. Trey Mitchell will be up next. And one of the things that we have to deal with here is that the farther the athletes carry that thing up the ramp, the longer it takes to get it back down. And sometimes we have bigger breaks between athletes. It's certainly not the easiest object to be moving around. Trey Mitchell, who is making his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic, who also won the 2021 Shaw Classic and was fourth at the world's strongest man last year as well in Sacramento, California. Trey Mitchell looking to become the second man to get that 881 pound frame all the way to the top of this 35 foot ramp. And in the past, if Trey's had a weakness, it's really come down to his grip. He's not performed exceptionally well in grip events in the past. How's his training gone leading up to this? He'll have the strength to lift it, no problem at all. Budges it on his first attempt. That's the issue. He's got the back strength, he's got the leg strength. It's the hands that are giving out. And Trey is unable to budge this thing. And he is nearly now more than halfway through his 30 second window. You can just see how hard he's working. And it's the big difference that the straps would make. If they were allowed straps on this event, Trey would lift no problem. Mitchell unable to move it. With every single event we've seen at the Arnolds, we've had incredible performances. JF Karan on the squat, Novikov on the dumbbell, Luke Stoltman on the log. Are we going to see another incredible performance by a different athlete once again? Maxime Boudreau, 8.41 seconds. It's going to take something special to beat that. Well, Bobby Thompson, the American Nightmare, will be up next. He had 480 pounds on that Austrian Oak going for the event win, unable to lift it, had to settle for a third place finish in that event. Look at Bobby Thompson. He's in his own world. Maxime Boudreau, out of the four men who have gone, is the only man who's been able to get that frame to the top of the 35-foot ramp and did it in one really fast rip. This really was incredible. He just moved so fast. As soon as it was up, he just kept those feet moving nicely. The grip stayed strong. And obviously, the quicker you can get this done, the less time you have to hold on. It sounds simple in theory, but doing it in reality is the issue. 880 pounds is a monstrous weight. Dr. Bill and I talked about it. We heard Rob Kearney mention it, but it's about outrunning your grip. 
Just go faster That's <laughs> than your hands do. can. You know, if, if you have to lift it multiple times, firstly, the fatigue of having to lift it that many times. Secondly, the grip fatigues quickly as well. So if you get it done in one go, you're a happy man at the end of this. Just because you picked it up once doesn't mean it makes it easy to pick it up a second time. Now, Bobby Thompson is getting set for his attempt here on that 881 pound frame. And the last, Bobby is out for a new And this is even. World record on a 400 kilo deadlift, 880 pound deadlift, is six repetitions. That's just lifting, and I'm talking world record. You have to lift this and then step individual feet every time. They're going to shuffle from the hips. Race through the core. They've got the big belts on to keep nice and tight through the midsection. And Bobby, easy lift, but again, Bobby's issue is comes down to grip strength. He's able to move it both times he's picked it up. He's going for a hook grip there. That's going to be exceptionally painful. I love Bobby's determination, though. Just trying to inch this monstrous weight up this ramp. Every little bit counts. He knows there's some big, strong guys to come. He's trying to get as many points as he can. I think he's ripped his callus there. There's blood from the hand. And, and that will that do happen? it for Thompson. Yeah, once that blood kind of gets out, it makes it slippy it's as well. It's the worst. And it becomes the end. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Nice little callus tear for Bobby Thompson. Maxime Boudreau is still the only man who has been able to get that frame to the top of the ramp. Luke Stolman, Alexei Novikov, Martins Litis, and Rob Kearney still to go here as the crew measures the effort from Bobby Thompson to get his official score. Of all the athletes left to come, Novikov is the one that's hard to predict. I've seen him do exceptionally well on frame carries and farmers walks before. Especially frames where he's allowed to use straps. Because like I said, the grip isn't an issue when they can use straps. And he is like lightning when it comes to the movement. The issue for him is going to be, can his grip hold it out? Martins is renowned for having a strong grip. He might not be the quickest athlete, but he again will perform consistently. He'll be looking for that top three finish. And if Novikov wants any chance at all of challenging going into the, the stones, he needs to beat Lishis on this event. Now, Litis has yet to finish outside of the top four in any event. Two thirds and a fourth in that log press. And there is the Dragon. Has okay. never won the Arnold Strongman Classic. Very similar to what he did at the Rogue Invitational at the end of 2021. Consistent performances. I didn't win an event until the final event at the Rogue Invitational. As Luke Stoltman will be the next man out. So Luke, after the disappointing squat, he's coming back into this competition really well. Dumbbell was solid, the log press was exceptional. If Luke can finish this event, he puts himself in a very strong position. Fourth place overall coming in. But very much alive for a spot on the podium here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Now in training, I was talking to their coach. He's been faster than, Luke, uh, than Tom in training. Sometimes his grip has just let him down. So this is going to be, can he get it done before the grip gives out? Here goes Luke Stolman. And don't like that tilt forwards. I'd rather see them move slightly forwards. Looked like he moved his grip forward in order to counter that a little bit. Now he's got to pick that thing that up looks again. better now. It's flatter, but the grip cannot hold out. And this is so frustrating. He knows he's got the strength to lift it. But every time he does, that grip is slipping. He's got to fight now. Final seconds. And that will do it for Luke Solman. So still just one man has gotten that thing to the top. Maxime Boudreau, our leader at 8.41 seconds. And Luke Solman looking like he's arguing with his hands right now. <laughs> I 
I remember when I, kept, when I first came into Strongman, 120 kilos in each hand was kind of standard. We're looking at 400 kilos, it's the equivalent of 200 kilos in each hand, 440 pounds in each hand. Take one more look at Luke Stoltman's run. You can see how much that tilted forward. I mentioned it a few times now. It's a technical error. If he did it like that from the from the start, maybe he could have got a little further. The front right part, front left part of that frame actually made contact with the the rails there as he was lifting on that first attempt that may have forced him to stumble a little bit and then drop it. But then it was just. Tough sledding after that for Luke Stoltman, just trying to get as much distance as he possibly could in that 30 second time window. If you think of how you hold a barbell, your thumb is connecting with your index finger. If it tilts forward, it's pulling at that index finger and thumb. If it tilts backwards, it's pulling more on the little finger, which isn't quite as important. You need to make sure that index finger and thumb are locked in tight. And with something this heavy, it just, it almost needs to be perfect in Absolutely. order for you to be able to, to move at any significant distance. There is no room for error. The three men remain, Alexei Novikov, third place overall coming into this event, just two points out of first. I've witnessed this man sprinting with these type of weights before. He's very, very good, very dynamic athlete, he's fast. I know I keep repeating it, but it's all going to come down to how his grip holds out. If he can hold out, he has a chance of beating Boudreaux's time. 881 pounds, he's going to take it 35 feet. He wants to make sure he gets everything perfect. Very methodical athlete. Thinks about everything. See how the pickup is. Alexei Novikov. Tilting again. Steady. He's not moving as fast as he normally does. Novikov is getting close. Nearly at the top there. If he can get this up one more time, I think he can do it. The other issue, Sean, is <laughs> what's this tactic? He's going to try and do it backwards. Now he's just going to try to pull it and see if he can get as much distance as he possibly can. He cracked the top of his shoulders against that frame. But that's a Really solid effort from Novikov. He's going to be close to Tom Stoltman on that one. He's got to be close to second place there. He may have actually passed Stoltman. It's 35 total feet. He's just about at the top there. He's just limping a little there, raising that fist. That's a warrior right there. He's fighting hard. And he has been a crowd favorite here for obvious reasons. He got off to a great start on this one. Got it up. He's normally quicker than this, and I, the way he was limping away then, maybe he's just feeling that the whole competition, he's battered, he's bruised, he's a warrior, fighting hard till the end. He's gonna get solid points. We'll wait for the measurement, but I think that was good enough to give him second place. What's the still, distance? Maxime Boudreau is still the only man to get that frame all the way up that 35 foot ramp as Martinez Litsis will be the next man out. And then it's your overall leader, Rob Kearney. And you know, Litsis being the tactician that he is, he's looking at this thinking, just finish. And Novikov score at 30 feet 10 inches will be good enough for second place right now. Puts a little bit of pressure on that man, Martinez Litsis. Martins is an athlete that does have an exceptional grip. He enjoys grip events. Very strong hands. Strong back, strong, strong everything. <laughs> That's and why he's such a great champion. And that little group of fans has been up there this entire competition cheering on the Dragon. Eight point four one seconds, the best time. 
30 feet 10 inches, the best distance amongst the men who did not get that frame to the top. We'll see what Lisi does here on his attempt. Martins Lisi's. Here he goes. Up. He's moving well. He needs to hold on. He looks fast. Leeds close to the top. And Martins Leeds gets to the top of the ramp. And hey, he may be on top of the overall leaderboard courtesy of that effort. That just shows the professionalism of this man. Every single event he is placing in those top positions. Unofficially 8.82 seconds, but we'll wait for that to get confirmed. It's going to be at worst second place right now, and we know Rob Kearney does not do well with this event. So Martins Leitz has really put himself in good position He's here. definitely put himself into first overall. It will take a miracle for Rob Kearney to beat that. And the way that was tilting forward, I thought maybe he might let it go, but he managed to hang on and get to the top. He control it, his grip strength there holding out. He looks very solid. Looked like he could have gone a little further if needed. Not as fast as Boudreaux, but he had the grip strength, he had the back strength, the leg strength to finish again in the top few positions. 10.3 seconds now officially for Martins Leitzis. With Rob Kearney the only man left to go. So again, we're looking at four events in, four different winners of each event, but that consistency being the separating factor. Rob Kearney has had an amazing show. Day one, he didn't put a foot wrong. Log, he's coming back from injury. This is his one week event in this show. He knows what he needs to beat. He's just gonna be looking at the distances, thinking, I need to pick up points. Mitchell, Markov, Maybe even Thompson, he can be looking at those distances thinking, if I can beat those, it's good points. And could really keep himself in contention for a spot on the podium here. Oh, if Rob can finish this, this show on the podium, I know he's going to be over the moon. No one was talking about Rob before this show. Showing what a warrior he is. Smallest man in the competition. Just listen to 285 pounds. He's the ultimate underdog. Always loves to prove people wrong. We will see how he does here on this 881 pound frame. Come on, Rob. Let's get this up as far as you can. He's gone a few steps. Taking a look at his hand now. It's. <laughs> The worst thing as well, once you get past that initial start, you're on the ramp, so the lift becomes harder. And despite the struggles, Rob Kearney... I think he's managed to beat yeah. Trey he Mitchell. Definitely got ahead of Mitchell, who barely budged it. So Kearney's going to finish second to last in this event. I was just about to say, he always just seems to have a smile on his face, always in a good mood. It's a great hairstyle as well. It's a fantastic mohawk. And he tore right off the bat. You can see where that callus ripped. Maxime Boudreau is going to win the event with an official time of 8.41 seconds. Martins Leitzis picks up another top four finish and looks to be your overall leader heading into the fifth and final event. We're still waiting on the official measurement for Kearney, but that most likely will put him in between Markov and Mitchell. Martins Leitzis, just consistent. Only two athletes finishing this event. It shows you how brutal it is. And then this was a downright sprint for Maxime Boudreau. Another incredible performance. Our strong men just raising the bar every time we see them compete. Maxime Boudreau there winning the frame carry. And Maxime Boudreau is with Kiki Dixon. Congratulations on your event win. You know, for most of us spectators, the closest thing that we can come to this is when we try to get all the groceries through the front door in one swoop. Yeah. What's it like to carry this thing? 
well, it's pretty much the same thing, but uh, the grocery for the month, I guess. But uh, it was really different being able to go up the ramp. It's pretty different. I never expected that. My knees were soft, but uh, I'm really happy I finished first place for sure. Yeah, this is your first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Yeah. What does it mean to you to take an event here? Uh, it's amazing. It's one of the heaviest shows of the year, and uh, to be able to do this around a crowd, it's amazing. Congratulations. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Four events, four different winners. Maxime Boudreau is the latest to pick up a W here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. 8.41 seconds, his winning time. Martins Litsis is now way in front, a five and a half point lead over Trey Mitchell, who moves into second. Novikov holding steady in third. Bobby Thompson is tied with him in points. Boudreaux, Stolman, and then Rob Kearney goes from first all the way down to seventh place. But with one event remaining and a really solid cushion, Martins Lisi's looks like he might be staring his first Arnold Strongman Classic Championship in the face. I think he's 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 touching it now. You know, he still needs to perform. He can't switch off the, the gas, but he's not that type of athlete. And we know how much he loves stones. He, he finished the Rogue Invitational winning the stone event. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him do the same again. He loves finishing strong. He has that great consistency, which gives him that. It, it, it takes a little pressure off. You don't need to win every single event when you're that consistent. And he's proven why he was the heavy favorite coming into the show. Well, we jumped the gun on the overall standings. Those were incorrect. We'll get those corrected and then update you on that. But I can say with confidence that Martins Lietzis is the overall leader heading in to that fifth and final event. Again, when we have the updated overall standings, we will get them to you. But we just have one event remaining. We'll bring that to you a little bit later. Still plenty to come here at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic. Stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues here from Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, those didn't look right. I went...
The feats of strength continue here at the Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio. Thanks for staying with us, everyone, here at the Greater Columbus Convention Center. Sean Woodland alongside Dr. Bill Crawford. It's our first Rogue Record Breakers event, and they have all involve something that's been a test for about 150 years now, the yes. Denny Stones. Yes. So the, the, uh, the Denny Stones, the original Denny Stones, live in Petart, Scotland, and uh, they weigh 733 pounds combined. That'd be 318 and a half and 414 and a half. So these are replicas of those stones, but those stones are from Scotland as commissioned by Gordon Denny, who is a relative, distant relative of Donald Denny himself. So the idea is you want to lift the stones and hold them as long as you can. It's shocking to me that women are, not shocking to me that women are doing it, but you know, that we're actually here with these stones and that women are going to hold them for time. Dr. Jan Todd. Actually, lifted them back in the 1970s. She's the first woman, and for a long time, the only woman. So this shows her, her ability to create this path for other women to have these opportunities and to, to hold these stones. Donna Moore will be the first woman up to the stones. 318 pounds and 414 pounds they each weigh. So there are a couple of ways to do this. This is with a hook grip or without a hook grip. If you and uh, you can lift them with straps or without straps. And so she's going without straps. So she's going to chalk up now. She's just getting a feel for where she wants to place her feet. So you straddle them. And kind of the strategy that most people use is to take the smaller stone and lift it first and use it as ballast to sit back on the larger stone. And then you just hold on to that front hand as, with all your life. So that's what she's going to do is that's why she set it up. You got the big stone in the front, reach back and get the smaller stone. And then rock back and let that thing ballast and, and stand up with it. Now this is not a walk, it's just a hold just for a time. Hold for time. Just a lift of Denny Stones. Denny Stone lift is a great feat of strength. Unbelievable feat of strength. Come on, Donna, get it up. She's got a hook grip. She's got her thumb underneath her, her, her fingers. She's trying to lift it without straps. Come on, Donna, get it up. There we go. She's We're got the starting back to budge. Off. Height could be an height could be an issue for some people as well. She's got some time. She's resetting herself. So you lift that back one and let that front stone kind of fall back. See the referee on the side seeing if the stones come up and they start time. So Donna did not get a lift on that. Great effort from her. She did manage to budget a little bit. Yes. But not able to get both of those stones off the floor. Well, this shows how far Jan was ahead of her time. <laughs> she yeah. lifted them. I mean, a, a strapless lift and without straps are two different lifts, honestly. But just getting that, that weight, 733 pounds, and it's all very centered. The way most people train to lift these aren't to make stones at your house, is to get a couple of loading pins and have uh, rings and, and Rogue sells all those things. And there's some other people that sell them as well. And you can just plate load it. And with, with the plate loading, you give yourself a chance to sort of progress up instead of starting at 733. Well, we were talking before we came on here about the, the ring that you have to grab that thing by. I mean, that's not forgiving when it comes to your hand. No, it's not. I think one of the first things you have to do when you start ring lifting uh, like this is you have, to, you have to get used to the shock of the way it feels because it just cuts right into your hand. Rebecca Roberts will be out next. Pardon me, Dr. Bill. Rebecca Roberts. I would love to see her stand up with these. I don't know what her preparation has been. But this is really a niche thing. There are actually a lot of athletes that are that are doing this now. Mm -hmm. And it's become much, much more popular. There's actually something in uh, August in Scotland each year called The Gathering. Um, and they they go and try to lift these, lift the stones. From Wales. Uh-oh. She may have already lifted these stones before. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Come on, Becca. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, come on. Oh, Almost come on. had it. She's got that back one up, but she could just lean back on that front hand. You can see the uh, referee, it looks like Bill Duerson, down on the ground. And he's going to raise his hand and say the stones are up and they start time. Yeah, look, that, look at that back stone. Just, that back ring is just a little smaller. That really jumps into your hand. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh so close. <laughs> oh, great effort. Rebecca Roberts. Look like she may have gotten it on that first attempt. It was very close. That back stone. You know, whomever lifts these stones and then however long they hold them would be a record. I like the fact people are wearing kilts. And Chloe Brennan will be up next. Chloe Brennan. Just 140 pounds. Well, you know, Jack Shakes, the 170, 180 pound uh, police officer from Belfast, that was what was shocking that he was, he wasn't one some, some uh, great power lifter or something. He was a kind of a slight man at the time. And for people who might not know his name, what, what is he? Jack Shanks was the, he is the legend who broke the myth that these stones could not be lifted barehanded without straps, but just actually lifted. Well, Chloe Brennan, all 140 pounds of her, are going to go after both these Denny Stones here. Came all the way from England just to lift these. She's locked in. Come on now. Got a hook grip. Oh, oh. that back one moved. Come on now. It definitely moved. I wonder who she's training with. Okay. Come on, she took the tape off of her thumbs. She's going to lock in and try to get it. And there's Jan Todd in the back. She's very interested in this. She wants to see these women lift these stones, and I do too. Come on. Oh! Yes! Oh! <laughs> she lifted them legitimately off the ground. 140 pounds. Wow. Man. I'll take it. Give I'll call that a W for her. Give her a half a second. I'll take it. That was fantastic. She still has time. Oh, come on now. Hold on to that thing. Lock that thing in. Man, listen it. to this crowd get behind. Yes. Chloe Brennan. Here we go. Yeah. And she's got him. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Unbelievable. That is fantastic. Wow. Wow, 140 pounds. That is fantastic. I'm going to start getting text messages any second. <laughs> <laughs> what really a am. moment. That is so great. Chloe Brennan, wow. who lifts the Diddy Stones. I got to be honest. Yeah. She walked out there. I, bet, I went, okay. Okay, what's going on? But with, you know what, though? She set up and the way she locked her hips and had her back totally engaged, straight up and down, and locked her legs in. And then she pulled that back, and then she got it up one time. We thought we were going to see something special. That was it. Holy cow. Wow. In a weekend that has provided us with some incredible moments, wow. we just had another one courtesy of 140-pound Chloe Brennan. Wow. That is crazy. That is, look at Jan's face in the <laughs> and back. And I love the reaction. <laughs> yes. How long did she hold them? Doesn't matter. She Doesn't got them matter. off the ground. She got them up even a second or two. What an impressive effort. I mean, we've seen some incredible things here. I, that might be the top of the list right I, now. I'll have to be honest. I, I would say yes. So that body weight to ratio on that lift is 140-pound woman lifting 733 pounds of stone off the ground with her bare hands. Look at that. Unbelievable. I look at look at the faces of the crowd. They're half gobsmacked. They're cheering, but they're also just kind of, really? Well, it just goes to show you, I mean, there's brute strength and then there's technique strength. Well, but you've got to be strong. I'm sure, absolutely. You. But her technique, as you said, 
was dead on. She was dead on. She, uh, that's what, when she set up, I said, who's coaching her? Somebody's been working with her, and I can tell it. Or she just, she just evolved herself into that lift by just putting the, putting the work in and doing it. She dreamed about this day, and that's what, that's what athletes do, strength athletes especially. They dream about the day, and they work to peak, and she did that. Wow. That is fantastic. Chloe Brennan, 140 pounds, just strolls out to the middle of that floor and okay. lifts more than 700 pounds <laughs> worth of Denny stones. That is so great. <laughs> and Kiki Dixon is with Chloe Brennan. Wow, just wow, congratulations. The crowd went wild for you, rightfully so. What was that like? Incredible, it's such an amazing experience. And I wasn't invited to do this, I asked to do it because it was the bigger girls and I was like, you know what? I've done the Dinnies in Scotland um, and I just wanted to prove a point and I think I, I did that. <laughs> point proven, congratulations. Thank you so much, thanks. Chloe, you just lifted the Denny Stones, and I'm guessing you're going to gain a lot of Instagram followers in the, in the process. But that was unbelievable. Absolutely Chloe unbelievable. So, uh, so uh, Laws came over. He's the he's the record holder with carrying these stones, so the actual Denny Stones at 14 seconds. He comes over with his eyes wide open. World class strongman is in shock. <laughs> Seeing that lift, that was phenomenal. I have to agree with this, Sean. That might be. About the best thing. I mean, that we've, we've seen, seen a 966 pound squat. We've seen Alexei Novikov on the on the dumbbell. We've seen Stoltman on the log. We saw the frame. But I did not think that one of the most memorable moments of this weekend would come from a 140 pound woman lifting a pair of stones. That was unbelievable. Well, this is a celebration of strength, and it doesn't matter who it is. Now look, two strong guys. <laughs> it takes to carry these things off. And Chloe picked him up. I want to meet her. <laughs> I really do. I'm being honest with you. I really want to meet her and talk to her. What Chloe's a great okay. moment here in our first event of the Rogue Record Breakers as Chloe Brennan lifts the Denny Stones. We still have a lot more to come, and I'm sure there will be some great moments in the final event for the Arnold Strongman Classic. So stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues here at the 2022 Arnold Sports Festival.
the fifth and final event of the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic, and it is a primal test of strength. The stone to shoulder is next. Only one event remains here at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic before we crown a champion in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet. Before we get into the event, we want to update you on JF Carone. If you were with us earlier today, you saw that he went out with an injury in the log for max weight. He has been admitted to a hospital. We do not know the extent of his injuries. We do know that he is unstable. He is in good spirits. In fact, Jan Todd was in his room when Maxime Boudreau won the frame carry. We were told that JF smiled and he said, tell Maxime congratulations. So our thoughts continue to be with JF Carone for a speedy recovery. We are in the final event before we crown a champion. We've had a ton of memorable moments, and any time you roll out a stone, it's red meat for these fans. Yeah, when you're talking stone lifting, it's a primal test of strength. This goes back thousands of years, manhood tests, and we're finishing this contest on the stone to shoulder. What a way to finish, what a competition it's been. We've had four different winners of each event. Are we going to see a fifth on this final event? There is a lot riding on this fifth and final event. Podium spots are still up for grabs. Your overall standings after four events, Martins Litis is finally atop the overall standings with 31 points. In order for Alexei Novikov to leapfrog him for first, Novikov is going to have to beat him by at least three spots in event number five. Rob Kearney, who has been our overall leader for most of the competition, he is now back in third, and he's trying to hold off Maxime Boudreau, Luke Stoltman, and Bobby Thompson still has a shot at one of the spots on the podium. Event five is the stone to shoulder as we close things out here at the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic. Get that thing to your shoulder as many times as you possibly can. And for more on that, let's go down to the competition floor. That's where Kiki Dixon is standing by. This stone belongs to Ode Haugen. It was gifted to him from his ex-wife. It's got his name and date of birth engraved on there. The nickname for the stone is the Tombstone. That's because when Ode decides to join his friends in Valhalla, they'll add another date. There is the 410 pound stone. We talk about barbells and, and even you know, some of the other implements we have out here. They're made more or less to be lifted. This thing is not. No, this is an extremely awkward lift. A barbell everyone can train on. It's the same universally. This stone is very specific. And that gives a huge advantage to the athletes that have been here before and used this stone. This is for me. We've seen him perform well on this before. He has a big advantage. He's in the position he wants to be. Novikov still has a chance. He's a great battler, but now the interesting battle is for those that third place spot. We've got a whole host of athletes battling hard. The podium is still not decided. It took five men to bring that thing out here. That's how heavy that stone is. Not just heavy, awkward. Like I said, very different to lifting that type of weight on a barbell. It's figuring out where your hands should be, how you're gonna roll it up your body, you first got to get it to your lap, then you need to get it up to your chest and up to the shoulders. Brutal event. What a way to finish the Arnold Strongman Classic. And we'll go in reverse order in the overall standings. That means Martins Lietzis will go last, and he is on the precipice of winning his first ever Arnold Strongman Classic. He's just been incredible all day. You know, Martins really has been the most consistent athlete. That's why he's on top of the podium right now. Everyone else has been incredible on individual events but he hasn't had a weakness, and he could be saving his best for last. Kiki Dixon caught up with the Dragon prior to event number five. Martins, you have a lot of incredible titles under your belt. You are currently first overall going into the final event for the Arnold Strongman Classic. What would it mean to you to win this? Uh, winning this is everything for me, because I've already won World's Strongest Man. That was a childhood dream. So 
the best of the best and strongmen uh, have won Worlds and have won Arnold's as well. So I need this to seal my dream completely and be truly one of the best strongmen. You're proving that here this weekend. I also have to say, I've seen you snacking on a lot of Rice Krispie treats. What's the magic in those? Power. <laughs> Thanks, we'll see you out there. My pleasure, thank you. Snap, crackle, power, apparently, for Martins Leetzis, as Yevgeny Markov will be the first man out. The scoring system for this event, if you get the stone to your lap, that's one point. If you get it to your chest, that's another 10. And if you place it on your shoulder, that's 100. So a perfect lift is 111 points each time you get that stone to your shoulder. Yeah, obviously the real challenge for this is getting it to the shoulder. That's why the points are valued so highly for that part of the lift. Three phases to go through. The athletes are going to be looking to get their hands in the right position to row the weight onto their lap. From then, they'll adjust their hand positioning. It's very awkward because you've got to have one hand lower, one hand a little higher, so that you allow yourself space to then roll it up to whichever favoured shoulder you choose. Evgeny Markov will be up first. Markov in ninth place overall with 14 and a half points. First attempt for Markov. So just figuring out where the hands need to be. This stone is not just heavy, it's awkward, it's slippy. He's having to push his knees in there. Now he's brought the feet in a little closer. He'll be in a stronger position to drive through those hips. There we go, one arm high, one arm underneath. He's gonna have to drive through the hips, roll it up past his head. He's just using a little too much bicep strength there. It all comes down to that hip power. It looks like he got 10 points so far. He's just trying a different position, composing himself. This is one of those events where experience on the equipment makes a big difference. Here we go, another attempt by Markov. Up to the lap. He just needs to bring those feet in slightly so he can get that hip power into the drive. It's just a little low with that left arm. Now trying to get another 10 points for getting it to his chest, and I don't know if they'll get him credit for that. They will, so 20 points so far for Markov. And I misspoke earlier, it looks like it is not a cumulative scoring system, so it's not 11 points if you get it to your chest, and then 111 if you get it to your shoulder. It's just 1.10, then 100. And the idea of the 100, obviously, if guys wanted to, they could just try and get it to their chest as many times as possible, or, or just to their lap as many times as possible. No one's gonna lift that stone 100 times to their lap, so heavily favors if you can get it to the shoulder. First time that Markov has not been able to at least lap that stone. Markov's first appearance at, well, at, at the Arnold Classic. Experience on the amateur side, the amateur world champion from 2020. But this is a huge step up, he'll go home He'll have learned from the experience, and I'm sure we'll see him back better next time. Well, Markov's going to call it after getting that stone to his chest twice. So 20 points for Yevgeny Markov. So our next athlete is Trey Mitchell, and Trey is a fantastic stone lifter. He's extremely good at Atlas stones, but again, we've mentioned how this is very, very different. Will that ability on the Atlas stones transition to this awkward tombstone all the way up to the shoulder. One more look at Yevgeny Markov, who had a really good start with that first lift, unable to get it to the shoulder, but 10 points for getting it to his chest, and then he would duplicate that on his second attempt. See, when you see these strongmen holding that stone, you appreciate how big it is. Markov is a big, powerful man, and it just looks awkward figuring out where to put your hands. I think guys with a longer wingspan could have a little advantage here. There is Trey Mitchell, who currently comes in in eighth place overall, 16 and a half points for Big Tex. 
clubs. They are bigger, bigger. They are big on the screen. Trey Mitchell, winner of the Shaw Classic in 2021. That really established himself as an elite level athlete in the sport of strongman. Atlas Stones are one of his favorite events. Does that transition to this? And Trey Mitchell is ready to go here. So much wider than a traditional Atlas stone. Now, one hand over the top. Good, powerful drive. Come Try, on. Trying to Let's get it get up this. to the shoulder. He needs it up all the way up to the shoulder. He can't quite get it there. He's fighting hard. He's going to get this. Hand away. And Mitchell has it. Does he get this? Oh, he had to put oh. an arm out. He has to put an arm out to show control. So he needs to move that hand away so it stays up there can't keep hold of it with two hands. And this has just got to be draining him of energy as he fights this 410 oh, pound stone. Wow. And we saw him put up a really good battle earlier on that save with the log. He's unable to duplicate that here, but he will get 10 points, but you got to wonder how much that took out of him. That's definitely taken it out of him. He was fighting hard with that stone there. He got so close. Couldn't and quite balance the stone and get the arm away. And he's got to lug that thing back up to the platform himself. Just mentally, he will feel drained. Obviously, physically, five brutal events that he's been through. But when you get that close and you fail, it's so hard to come back. Second attempt for Trey Mitchell. And he's done. He's going to call it, but a great fight on that first lift. And maybe he's going to go again here as he goes to the towel. He still has about a minute left to go. Trey Mitchell got so close on that first attempt. Yeah, that first attempt was, he was basically there. He just needed to one inch more onto the shoulder, get the arm away. He would have got the 100 points. I can't see him getting it now. You just see it in their face. You see that power draining from them. He's valiantly fighting on here, but just can't see this rep going up now. Twenty seconds left for Trey Mitchell. Trey, another first timer here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. If he can just get it to his lap, he can get a point. Final seconds for Mitchell, and after a great fight on his first attempt that almost saw him score 100 points, I really thought he had that. I did as well. He was so close. He'll settle for 10 points. We'll see how close he was on this first attempt. So this was good positioning. And then look how hard he's working to get that stone up. Almost there. Comes away from him, then he just keeps fighting. And look, it's there. He's just got to get that hand away. Oh, and he tried, and he just didn't have that right hand in the right spot. Exactly that. He just couldn't keep it balanced. Needed it to just be slightly under the stone, pushed back a fraction more. And he fought hard with that. And the problem is when you put that much effort in, it just drains you, and that's what we saw. He was valiantly fighting on, but just the energy was spent. And now the man known as the king of the stones, Tom Stoltman, the 2021 World Strongest Man, will be up next. So we all know how good Tom is at lifting stones. The disadvantage he has on this is he has to lift it higher than anyone else. But he has the wingspan, he's got the back strength. How much does he want it? It's not been the competition he wants it to be. Last event, does he have that fight still to keep battling and climb up that leaderboard? Stolman currently seventh place overall with 18 and a half points. And like you said, has not had the competition that he wanted coming into the weekend. We thought it would, we were in for another scene that we had at the Rogue Invitational where Stoltman and Leeds were battling for that top spot and that never really materialized here. Oh, Looking to become the first man to get that 
410 pound stone to his shoulder. Let's see what Tom can do. He needs to stop faffing with this stone, get his hands right under, and focus on lapping it first. I think he's trying to get his hand almost too far under. He needs to make sure the hands are locked in, use that grip strength. He's trying to get round it like an atlas stone, and it's a little different. Stoltman still trying to find the right handle on this thing, and still has two minutes to go, so plenty of time for Tom Stoltman. Still looking to become the first man to get that thing on his shoulder, and he's going to call it. That is surprising. It's just not been his competition, and Tom's one of those athletes. He, he thrives on momentum. When he starts a competition well, you just see the confidence ooze out of him. Unfortunately, we've not seen that from him this week. He's been quiet. He had an amazing performance at Britain's Strongest Man last week. Unfortunately, not able to reproduce that this week, but he is a young man still, the current World's Strongest Man, and he will be back. Well, Bobby Thompson will be up next. Now, Bobby Thompson does have an outside shot at a podium finish here. He currently sits in sixth place overall, 22 and a half points. He's just three points back of Rob Kearney for third. Yeah, Bobby's had some fantastic events in this contest. Notoriously, Stones are one of his weakest events. Almost won event number three, the Austrian Oak for Max Waite. He almost had a 480-pound lift over his head to win, but settled for a third place Something in that event. Point out, just looking at him there, both his hands are wrapped. He's cut both of those hands up on the frame carry. That's not going to help at all on this event. He's got it to his lap. That's good. And that will be worth one point. Bobby shorter in the arms than some of the athletes. Great for pressing, but he's and got this. Thompson's trying to roll it to his right shoulder. Just needs to shove it up there on the shoulder now. Get the hand away. Keep it back. And Thompson yeah. has it. Back. And that is huge for the American Nightmare. 100 points puts him on top of the overall standings in this event right now. That is absolutely huge for Bobby. You can see he struggled more to get the weight off the lap, off the floor, sorry. Once it was onto his lap, he looked strong. Well, now he's got to waste some time and effort getting that thing back on the platform. He's still got 50 over, over a minute. Minute 20 to go here, so plenty of time Composing for Bobby himself. Thompson, who's looking to finish in third place or higher here. Still alive for a podium spot, and that first lift went a long way towards that, and he's trying to get this crowd behind him, and they are rising to the challenge. Second attempt here for Bobby Thompson. He's fired up now. Let's see if we can get this onto his lap easier than the last time. Crowd going absolutely crazy for Bobby after he shouldered that. Thompson now just cannot find the handle, but he has gotten it to his shoulder once. He does lead in the event. I was very, very impressed there. Stones are notoriously weak for him. He's had bicep issues, he's shorter in the arms. You can see this is the area where he struggles, getting it from the floor up to the lap. Once he had it on his lap, he was excellent. Bobby Thompson will leave the competition floor for the final time here at the Arnold Strongman Classic with 100 points under his belt after successfully lifting that stone to his shoulder on his first attempt. Look at this. One hand goes under. He's getting that arm over as far as he can. Driving through, you can see he got it just that little higher than Trey did, and then he's just shunting it up onto the shoulder. Make sure it's balanced before he takes that arm away. Look at that lift, that's a happy Bobby Thompson there. The nightmare turning into a dream at the end of the Arnold Classic. And I think he just may have inspired a young man to start his own strongman career there. <laughs> Bobby Thompson, once again, sixth place overall, 22 and a half points, only three points out of a spot on the podium. He's putting pressure on the guys above him. That's a great moment. 
Yeah. That's how you create young fans right there. Absolutely fantastic. The sport of strongman is growing. One more round of applause for Maxime Boudreau will be up next. Boudreau currently in fourth place. He's tied with Luke Stoltman in points. Maxime, another athlete that's had a fantastic Arnold Classic this year. Maxime is only a point and a half behind Rob Kearney for third. First attempt here. Maxime won the frame carry earlier this afternoon. That's what put him in position to maybe finish on the podium, but he's got to find a way to get the stone to his shoulder to you see it just slipping out of that left hand to keep pace with Bobby Thompson. The athletes aren't allowed tacky like they would be on an, on an Atlas stone. They're allowed the, the cloths that give a little bit of stick, but so much harder in terms of grip strength. You need to really have strong wrists, strong fingers, push into that stone as hard as possible, squeeze through with the arms. And it's not going to happen for Maxime Boudreau. But depending on what else happens here, it looks like his podium hopes have disappeared. Yeah, he would have wanted better. He has had a great contest, winning the frame carry in a blistering time. You have to get it at least to your lap in 30 seconds in order for your window to continue. So that's why he was done after, after 30 seconds. Boudreau was unable to get it to his lap. It would have been also worth one point had he gotten it there. As we take a look at Luke Stoltman, who came in tied with Boudreau in points at 24. Stoltman, a guy who would love to finish on the podium here in just his first appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. If Luke can get on the podium, he's going to be the happiest man in the room. It was a, a dream for him to lift the Austrian Oak with Arnold Schwarzenegger sat there watching, cheering him on. He won that event. He roared, gave him confidence. 470 pounds was the winning lift for Luke Stoltman in the Austrian Oak. See how Luke copes with this. Potentially, see, not, not only is he great at the log, he's great at cleaning the log. That could be beneficial in this type of event. Getting that stone from the lap up to the shoulder. Let's see how he copes off the floor. We've seen some of the athletes just getting it from the floor to the lap has been a challenge. So far, Bobby Thompson is the only man who has gotten that stone to his shoulder. Trey Mitchell got really close, but had to settle for just 10 points for getting it to his chest. Come on, Luke, let's finish strong. And again, another athlete that's just struggling to get it off the floor. Remember, he's got to get it to his lap within 30 seconds here. And there, there it go. goes. So that will be worth at least one point. Now get your hands in the right position. Drive hard through with those hips. Just can't go. He's trying to get that hand over the top so it's under the stone. Giving himself more purchase. And Luke, I don't know if they'll give him credit for getting it to his chest. They will. Ten points. He needs to try and get it to his chest at least one more time. Still plenty of time here. You can see the clock in the bottom left-hand part of your screen clicking down. About 90 seconds to go. Right now tied for third in the event with Trey Mitchell. Such a challenging event, this. You could see Luke was trying to fight to get his hands in the right position, but he's just not long enough in the arms to get that hand where he wants it. And Gets it to the lap much more quickly that second time. Now we'll see if he can finish the job. If he can get this up to his chest. And there it goes. Stolman shoulder. Oh. has it to the chest, but that'll be good now to put him in a tie for second. Now he needs to try and get one more point. One more point, he goes clear into second. 
It's important to think clearly in this type of situation. He's got to think, right, I'm tied with Markov now. I need one more point to go into second place. Give myself a chance of getting onto the podium. Don't worry about the shouldering now. Focus on getting this point. 30 seconds to go now for Luke Stoltman. Third attempt. Twenty seconds left. Come on, Luke, fight hard. Just looks like he's out of energy at this point. I mean, he's had such a great effort <laughs> trying to beat it into submission. It's not going to work. But Luke Stolman gets 20 points, ties for second. He's still alive for a spot on the podium. Hathor Bjornsson in the back there applauding that effort as Rob Kearney looks on. Kearney will be the next man out. And Curly, the man who occupies the third and final spot on the podium. But both times, Luke Stolman able to get that stone to his chest. And I thought on that second attempt, he would, had a chance of sliding it to the shoulder. He looked close. Look at this. That wasn't the attempt. Here we go. Gets it up to the lap. The second attempt was so much closer. Getting close, needed the hand underneath. Looks like he just got an awkward position there on his chest where he couldn't rotate it enough to get so it on his shoulder. The, the size, the awkwardness, so many challenging factors. Now this is an interesting position. Rob Kearney is on the podium currently in third place. If it was me competing, I'd give it a crack at getting it to the shoulder first time. If I don't think that's happening, I'm trying to lap it and get it to my chest three times. That would be in my head. I know if I can get this to my chest three times, it's 30 points. Securing him that podium position. Much easier said than done, I know. Rob Kearney had a great start to the competition. Back-to-back -back second place finishes on day one. That put him in the overall lead. Was able to hang on to that after event three and then lost it in the frame carry. Now he sits in third place looking to finish on the podium. This is, this is his first attempt. He's turned it to the slimmer side. One of the shorter athletes. Again, it's just the challenge of getting it from the floor. He has about lap. 10 seconds now to get that thing to his lap. This is disastrous for Rob. Ernie just can't manage it here. He's running out of time. He can't do it. And he won't be able to lap it. And with uh, that, Rob Kearney, they have watched it. Incredible uh, contest. Just faltering at the last phase. Saluting the crowd, smile on his face as always, but doesn't Incredible look like he's going to manage to finish inside the top three. He had such a good day one, was in first place after the first two events, proving he is one of the best. Unfortunately, he may have just slipped off the podium with that performance there. Two men remain, Alexei Novikov and Martins Leitzis. Now Novikov, if he wants to leapfrog Leitzis for the top spot in the overall standings, We'll have to find a way to first beat Bobby Thompson's score and then hope that he can beat Leitzis by at least three spots in this event. The only thing he can control is trying to get first place at the moment. His, ta his target will be to beat Bobby Thompson. Put the pressure on. Novikov taking a second to read the stone here. Final event, final two athletes. We're guaranteed a new champion. Novikov, I think, is pretty safe when it comes to the podium race. Looking like he will finish inside the top three. So you see there, Novikov was just getting the guys to put the stone in position. He wants it. He doesn't want to have to waste any energy before he starts. Novikov is a real tactician. You always see him before events looking at equipment, trying to figure things out. It's one of the reasons he's been so successful in his young career. 
and the roof might come off this place if Alexei Novikov gets this stone to his shoulder. This crowd has been behind him from the word go. And now here he is in the final event with a chance to maybe win the Arnold Strawman Classic. And that is to the lap. Nice and fast, getting the first phase done. Gets it to his shoulder, he'll tie for first place and in the event right now. There. He needs to adjust. Yeah, that's a better position now. Nice to drive hard with the hips, keep it locked in. And Novikov had it to the chest. That'll be worth 10 points. Still plenty of time, still two minutes to go for Alexei Novikov. Yeah, he's got loads of time. So again, he's trying to make sure it's in position. I'm not sure he's happy with that position. There we go, adjusting it. Attempt number two for Alexei Novikov. Chalk on the hands. He needs to make sure they're as dry as possible. He needs more than this. This isn't enough to put pressure on Lisi's. He needs to get this up to the shoulder. Anything less is not good enough. Second attempt now for Novikov. He has a minute left to go. It's like being in a tennis match. You've got to force your opponent to serve this out. Don't just hand it to him. I think it might just be a little too much today. He's got time. He got that stone up so fast in his lap on that first attempt. I'm a little surprised to see him struggling here on his second. But 410 pounds has, its, has a way of taking a toll on you. Not just the, this event, it's the event previous. The body is battered. You can see the finish line, it's almost over. Novikov still. has it to the left. He has 20 seconds. He needs this up to the shoulder. 15 left. And he's close. He's got it to his chest. Can he there it goes. It? Hand away. He and he has it. it. Alexei Novikov is in first place. Alexei Novikov forcing Martins Lissis to serve this out if he wants to be the champion. <laughs> and look how much it means to him. Honestly, I didn't see that coming. He took his time and the drama built and Alexei Novikov delivers when the pressure is on and he puts a little bit on the man on the right, Martins Litsis, who congratulates Alexei Novikov. So now Litsis is going to have to go out and earn this thing. Exactly that. Look how much it means to him. It came down to the final seconds, and Alexei Novikov, with a flair for the dramatic, gets that stone to his shoulder and puts himself in the lead in this event. I'll tell you what as well, he had to work hard every single phase of this. None of it was easy, and he was making sure there was no way that hand was coming away until he knew it was balanced. And one of the best reactions we have seen all weekend here from Alexei Novikov as Martins Litsis steps up. Now Litsis just needs to beat 20 points. If he can do that, he'll win. Because Novikov has got to beat him by at least three spots in order to overtake first place in the overall standing. So Litsis has just got to get into his chest three times. But I'll tell you something about Litsis. When it comes to winning titles, he likes to win the last event. When he won the World's Strongest Man, he won on the stones. When he won the Rogue Invitational, he won on the stones. We are here at the Arnold Classic. If he can win this event, he'll go down as one of the greatest strongmen of all time. It's the one feather in his cap that he does not have, standing on top of the podium here at the Arnold Strongman Classic, and this is his first attempt. Remember, he's got to get this thing to his lap in 30 seconds, and that won't be a problem. Okay, he's done the first part now. He's got time. If he gets it to his shoulder, that will be enough. And Martins Leitzis will stand on the top of the podium here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. Martins Leitzis, he's guaranteed his win. Now does he do more for the crowd?
Come on, Martins, we want to see one more. And now it's time to put on a show for the Dragon. And it looks like he's going to go for it. Loads of time left. Like you said, Laz, he doesn't just want to win this. He wants to win it by winning the final event. Listen to this crowd. They are going absolutely crazy for the Dragon. This for the event win if he gets it to his shoulder. It is to the lap. He's getting this. He's going up. Come on, Martins. Up to the chest. Walk it up. Walk it up to that shoulder. Hand away. And, and the Dragon saves his best for last. He will win the event. And there is no <laughs> doubt. Martins Leetes is your 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic champion. Achieving everything he set out to do. The world's strongest man. The rogue invitational champion. And the Arnold Strongman Classic 2022 champion. Only needed two attempts. Didn't need to make the second one. Arnold Schwarzenegger certainly appreciates that effort. And for the fifth straight event we have a great moment two great moments and we have a new winner five different winners of these events but this man's lowest position was four he was not outside the top four on any event for four of the events he was top three really tremendous and this is the one to put an exclamation point on it didn't need to do it but wanted to win the event, and there it is. He had to work hard for it, but there is your 2022 champion, and what a man. You have to see where Alexei Novikov wound up, but it's looking like he will finish in second place. That's unofficial. And then third place was up for grabs, and that may belong to Bobby Thompson. He may have done enough, let's see. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon, who is with your 2022 Arnold Strongman Champion. Martins, you did it. You are the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic Champion. How ecstatic are you? <laughs> Woo, uh, words, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's amazing. It happened all the years. <laughs> I'm here. I want it. Oh, yes. <sighs> Words escape yeah. you, right? Just emotion is there. You are known as the dragon. You are a ferocious dragon, oh. no doubt. Where did that nickname come from? And is it going to evolve after this? It's from the roar when I win. <laughs> Can we get a roar? Ah! Congratulations. This was a huge accomplishment. You talked about this is what dreams are made of. What else is on that dream list of yours? Winning worlds again and going down as a legend. You are definitely going down as a legend. On the count of three, can we get a Martins? One, two, three. Martins! Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Martins Leetzies ticking that final box on his list. He says he wants to go down as a legend. He is well on his way towards doing that. 41 points. Alexei Novikov will finish in second place. That is huge for him. Luke Stoltman will tie Bobby Thompson in points for third. Rob Kearney winds up finishing inside the top five, and you know he's going to be extremely happy with that result. Just an incredible contest. Luke Stoltman there, finishing joint third with Bobby Thompson, Alexei Novikov, battling hard throughout. But the champion, Martins Lysis, he had a dream to win all the major shows. He's done that. Now we can hear there, he wants to win them again and go down as a strongman legend. Martins Lysis, the dragon, breathing fire here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. 
and he will stand atop the podium here in Columbus, Ohio. We are going to take a break. We'll come back with the Rogue Iron Game. Dr. Bill Crawford will join us to wrap up the 2022 Arnold Strongman Classic. Stay with us, everybody.
Martins Leetzies is your 2022 Arnold Strongman Champion. Five fantastic events with five different winners. An unbelievable competition. Thanks for staying with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with Lawrence Chalet and Dr. Bill Crawford. I've only been to three of these. And they've all been incredible, but this one I think is the most memorable that I have done so far. Absolutely incredible competition from start to finish. These, these athletes really had to battle the whole time. This is a battle of survival. This was a titanic struggle. You saw these gentlemen at the very end have to come out with those last lifts when it really counted, and there was nothing left in the tank. They still performed. That's what this is about. Yeah, the athletes have just given everything. We've seen them backstage hobbling around. They, they get out there and they're warriors and they put on a fight, but they are suffering. It means everything to every single one of them. Just my hat goes off to them. Incredible, 10 incredible athletes that we had today. Martins Lises, a deserving champion. But wow, what a contest. Yeah, unbelievable that they even had the strength to just walk out on that competition floor and even attempt uh, that last event. Let's take a look at our overall uh, event results from event number five. And this is what clinched it for Martins Lises. He got that stone to his shoulder twice. He didn't need to. But he went ahead and put on the show, wanted that event win, and for the second straight competition that uh, we've seen him at, he wins the final event, his only win of the weekend. Alexei Novikov will finish in second. That locks up second place overall for him. And Bobby Thompson, with 100 points, will finish in third. And Dr. Bill, we got to talk about the performance from Martins Leeds. I mean, he is so consistent. He never finished lower than fourth, and then he comes in not having to win the event. He already had locked it up, decided, I'll just do another one. Right, and not only that, I mean, it could have been a disaster. If he didn't get that stone to his lap, he would have lost after being so close. But that didn't happen. He's lifted this stone before. He had two, he had two stone lifts in 2019. He got it to the shoulder the first time. The event is over. The crowd got behind him, and he wanted to keep going. Not only a warrior, but he wants to show that he is the champion. One event win this entire weekend, and it came on the last event. Alexei Novikov finishes second. He had every reason to you know, not perform up to his best here, but he was unbelievably good over these five events. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've said the word warrior a number of times this weekend, and he really has been. He fought until the end. We didn't see it coming, you know? He was struggling with the stone. He had to battle hard. Time was ticking out, and from somewhere, he dug deep and managed to put the pressure on the champion. He made him, here he comes as well, the one and only champion, <laughs> Mr. Martins Leases. But what a performance by all these guys today. Well, Martins doesn't have a headset, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, yeah, we'll just, I'll give him my headset. How about you guys oh, can talk for a second? I'll give, final results. This is the final results, and we'll get Martins mic'd up here. 41 points for Leases. A big trophy. Alexei Novikov will finish in second by seven points over Luke Stoltman. He and Bobby Thompson tie for third. Rob Kearney, who led for a majority of the competition, he winds up inside the top five. So we're working on getting Martins mic'd up here. I can't believe a man this big just sneaked up on me, but congratulations, you, you did it. Comfortable? How, how's the sound? You sound, you sound great. <laughs> Martins, you, you talked about this a little bit with Kiki, but I know you've been, you've been thinking about this for a while. You've been dreaming about what this moment would be like. Now that you've realized it, how does it compare to the way you thought it would be? Uh... So surreal. <laughs> I've imagined this moment over and over again, but it's having it actually come true still feels like a dream. I'm still processing it. Yeah, yeah. you've accomplished a lot now in your career, and you said you want to you know, be remembered as a legend. What's the next step for you in that process? Next step, win World's Strongest Man again. I, I am not going to stop until I'm a legend, until I also grow this sport. I want more people to know about strongman, to compete in strongman, and to see this sport flourish more than anything. Well, as everybody, uh, I, I think we've talked about this quite a bit. Martins, to win World's Strongest Man is a pinnacle, but the street cred, the strongest guy, you got to win the Arnold. You got to. You've done it. Yeah. The, to win both is very, very, very rarefied air. We're talking Zadrunas, we're talking Half Thor, we're talking Brian Shaw type territory. Get another win in World's Strongest Man, and no question they, they would be that territory. That's right. So only, only the fourth man to do both of those titles. That's a pretty impressive list to be on with. How many times are you going to come back and do this? Um, we'll see. I'm going to go contest by contest. Uh, it's, been, it's been one hell of a journey. 
It's taken a toll, of course, because I had to take a year and a half off after uh, winning Worlds um, to recover my body. And I'm feeling really good right now. So one contest at a time. Sights set for Worlds now. Martins, I've got to say that, you know, we, we saw you at the uh, Rogue Invitational. And Laz and I said, you know, he's here to win. He did, he, you came back. You gave yourself the time to recover. And we knew if you were there, you were there to win. Absolutely. And at least compete for the win. So you did it right. We give you all the congratulations. Thank you. Speaking Thank of you. the Rogue Invitational, you, you mentioned being, you know, coming back from the injury. That was the first time you competed in a while against a loaded field. Winning that, what effect did that have on your confidence moving forward? I was going in, in it to win it, and uh, winning it just uh, confirmed that what I was doing was right. Confirmed to me that the steps I was taking, the, the process that I believed in, uh, was the right one, and I could just continue on that process, and it would carry me through. How are you going to celebrate this one? Abs oh, how am I going to celebrate? <laughs> Training for Worlds. All right. Right back to work. <laughs> Mate, well, I got, I got a new uh, video game called Elden Ring. So I'm going to. All right. I'm sure plenty of you guys know about that one. Downtime. I'm going to enjoy that for a, for a week or two. I've got to ask you one training. more question. What are they chanting when they're chanting, that your, your squad up there? What's going on? Uh, he's here. He's there. He's every fucking where. <laughs> <laughs> From Ted Lasso. Okay, there Very we go. inspirational show. I love that show. Uh, Romark and some other guys started chanting that during uh, while I was working out. And okay. it caught on. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess pretty soon you're going to be on a couch with a controller in your hand. So, oh, yeah. yeah have fun gaming. Enjoy this, Martins. Thank you so much for, uh, for stopping by and congratulations. Thank man. We you really guys. appreciate it. Let's take a look at the overall standings just uh, one more time as Martins Leetes wins his first career Arnold Strongman Championship. 41 points. He never finished lower than fourth. He saves his best performance for last as he wins event number five. Alexei Novikov comes up. With a second place finish, 37.5 points for him. And then Luke Stoltman and Bobby Thompson tie for third at 30.5 points. And then Rob Kearney will wind up inside the top five. A great finish for Rob Kearney. Let's talk about Alexei Novikov and what he was able to, to pull off here. Uh, he looks like he has a very bright future ahead of him. He is absolutely on the ascent right now. He's an incredible athlete. He's already won World's Strongest Man. He was the youngest athlete competing here today. You know, he's got so much more to come. He's already achieved a huge amount. He's always there or thereabouts, not quite as consistent as Martins was, but he's younger, he's still on the rise, and I think we're gonna see some incredible battles between these two gentlemen over the next few years. Dr. Bill, what impressed you the most about what Alexei Novikov was able to pull off here? I think staying in the hunt, staying where he needed to be, and that last, stone lift he only had 30 seconds to go and he got it on his shoulder and that that made sure that he catapulted himself up to possibly win he put all the pressure all the pressure on martins and martins had to come out and deliver and that's what a champion does is make the other guy win he didn't fault out on the win he made him win we had a tie for third place between bobby thompson and luke stolman bobby thompson really put on a charge here on yes, day number he two he did a great job i mean he was you know, kind of flagging a little bit in some of the events. Had a, you know, uh, a couple of events didn't go great. He almost threw a knockout punch with uh, on the on the uh, log with a big 480 uh, pound log lift. Didn't quite get it overhead, but it put him in a great position to be here. Then he got the stone up, almost got it to his shoulder, really fought all the way, and he did a fantastic job. And he was the alternate. That's right. He did wow. get in. Yeah, <laughs> he's a God. really good point. He ties for third. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, Luke Stoltman, as you mentioned earlier today, how much it would mean for him to finish inside the top three. And here he is tied for third place for uh, Bobby Thompson. A lot of it because of that performance in, in the Austrian Oak. Absolutely. I mean, when we looked at day one, the first event, the squat, Luke made a mistake. He ended up coming last on the squat to compose yourself and come back and end up on the podium. Incredible achievement by the Scotsman. You know, his brother is the world's strongest man. He's often overlooked because of that, but Luke is a tremendous athlete. The log lift performance, for me, one of the best things we saw this weekend. He looked like he had so much more in the tank. He's fighting hard, he's enjoyed it. It's great to see him smiling. He's such a passionate athlete, and I couldn't be happier to see him finish on an Arnold podium in his first ever Arnold Strongest Man contest. Well, there's still plenty of action to come here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. We got a taste of that at the Rogue Record Breakers. We're gonna have more of that tomorrow 
Chloe Brennan, who lifted those Denny Stones at 145 Eastern, will start our Rogue Record Breakers coverage. We have the elephant bar deadlift, the men's weight over the bar, the Denny Stone walk for the men. I think you're doing that, aren't you, Laz? My name's down for <laughs> in the morning. Gonna get Can't it. wait to see that. Big Laz is going to be back <laughs> out on the competition floor. That will be a lot of fun. A final thought, when you, when you look back at this Arnold Strongman competition, how are you going to remember it? What's the one thing that's really going to stand out to you? We'll start with you, Laz. For me, it's the, the talent that we have in depth right now. I mean, five different events, five different winners. Of course, we talk about the consistency of Martins, but we have so many fantastic athletes right now. The, the love they have for each other as well. You know, this is a sport, they're like a family. They all battle hard, but you can see the guys get on, they help each other. If someone gets hurt, they're straight there to help. That, for me, is what makes Strongman. You know, winning is great, but it's the admiration all the athletes have for each other and the respect. How about you, Dr. Bill? Well, I think, you know, the excitement and the performances, I do agree that the uh, strongmen are a community, but the, the strength of the competition really stood out. Mm -hmm. That every event had someone that had to really deliver, and they kept battling and kept battling, and all the way to the end. I mean, this is a survival competition, like we said, in some ways, and they kept coming. They didn't yeah. stop. Yeah. That, was, that was why we're here. Yep. And Martins Leites, with another consistent performance, doesn't win a single event until the very last one, and he clinches his first ever Arnold Strongman Classic Championship. Thank you so much for being with us here today, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the competition as much as we did. For Kiki Dixon, Dr. Bill Crawford, and Lawrence Chalet, I'm Sean Woodland. We'll see you tomorrow for the Rogue Record Breakers.